Michigan State. Enjoy the game. Mike Tirico is here at halftime, but now Jerry Punch and Bill Lewis. Guys? It's bowl fever time for Michigan State fans here in Shreveport, Louisiana. The Spartans have put together their first winning season since 1990 and now are looking to add the finishing touches to a successful year behind first-year head coach Nick Saban. For LSU, the Tigers are in their own backyard playing the biggest game of the season. First-year head coach Jerry DiNardo's team is sparked by a pair of freshman running backs nicknamed Thunder and Lightning. It's Michigan State and LSU and it's next. We welcome you to a sold-out Independent Stadium in Shreveport, Louisiana for the 20th Annual Poland Weed Eater Independence Bowl featuring the Michigan State Spartans out of the Big Ten and LSU out of the SEC. Hello everyone, I'm Jerry Punch and this matchup is a selection committee's dream. Two programs with great football traditions, identical records at 6-4-1, and one, and enthusiastic first-year head coaches. In fact, we talked to both coaches and each said what we need to do to win tonight is exactly the same. I think one of the most difficult things in bowl games is to get your offensive timing back. And, and the sign of who gets their offensive timing back better, us in Michigan State, will be our success or lack of on first and ten. So as, as people watch the game, I think whoever's having the most success on first and ten is going to have the early edge in the game. We're joined now by expert analyst Bill Lewis and coach. The big story coming out of Shreveport today was the fact that Michigan State head coach Nick Saban actually disciplined four key starters for apparently curfew violations. Four very productive starters. You've got uh, fullback Scott Green who produced 16 rushing touchdowns during the season. Bob Denton, their starting left tackle, the best player on their offensive line of scrimmage. And then on defense, their number one and number two tacklers on their team. Middle linebacker Reggie Garnett and strong safety Marvin Wright. The Spartans will miss those four players early in this football game. It's time for their senior quarterback, Tony Banks, to step forward and shoulder a little bit more of the offensive load until he can be joined by Green in that backfield. Well, across the field, LSU will counter with two exciting freshman tailbacks. They've nicknamed them Thunder and Lightning. They're two of perhaps the most productive freshman backs in all of college football, and they complement each other so well. Kevin Falk will attack the perimeter of the defense with his speed. Kendall C Cleveland is the north-south runner, and both of them will attack a defense. It's two of the premier college football conferences in America, the Big Ten and the SEC. Two programs back on the rise. These folks are going nuts. This house is rocking. Back with the kickoff of the 20th Annual Poland Wood Eater Independence Bowl in a moment. At this special time of the year, all of us at Harvest Sugarland in Plaquemine wish to extend a joyous holiday greeting. We now thank you for your patronage throughout 95, a community support leading to our best year ever. In gratitude, we invite you to enjoy tremendous year-end savings on our full line of cars and trucks. Ford, Lincoln, Mercury, Chrysler, Plymouth, Dodge, Jeep, Eagle, all close out priced for the close of 95 at the all-new Harvest Sugarland, Highway 1 in Plaquemine. Hey, Gonzales and Donaldsonville, if you want to save money on fine furniture, you got to shop us before you buy. we got this three-piece horn coffee table set for just $88. we got this five-piece oak dinette set with solid oak chairs for $498. That's right, $498. We've got this two-piece L-shaped sectional with state-of-the-art fabric for just $698. Folks, remember, it's only L-shaped furniture in the Shreveport, Louisiana, couldn't ask for a better week. It's getting a little cool here now. 47 degrees wind, not a factor at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Fair skies, and it is a grass surface. This field in excellent condition. LSU has won the toss and will defer. Michigan State will receive. There's a deep man. I got to watch. Derek Mason, number one in the Big Ten in kickoff return yardage. And he can turn the game around in a hurry. Wade Ritchie kicks it off, and we're underway in Shreveport, Louisiana. There's the man Michigan State will lean on heavily today, senior Tony Banks, second team, all Big Ten quarterback. And remember, the suspensions will mean that Travis Reese will start at fullback instead of the two-time MVP, Scott Green, so Reese will have a big load to carry early on. Derek Mason, leading receiver.
receiver on the team, fourth in the Big Ten this year. And up front, Dave Mudge will start in place of the senior, Bob Denton.
Spartans defensively. Remember, they had some people they had to replace, like Kenny Allen, left tackle up front. He leads the team with six sacks, but behind them, they had some concerns because Tyrone Garland is going to start at middle linebacker in place of their leading tackler, Reggie Garnett, and in the secondary, Dan Hackenbrack starts in place of Marvin Wright, who was the, the second leading tackler. At their own 38-yard line. There's Jerry DiNardo, head coach at LSU, his first year at LSU after four years at Vanderbilt. And Kevin Falk scampers out of bounds up near the 40-yard line. Tyrone Garland there to run him out of bounds. A gain of about two and a half, three. surprise coach at Michigan State would come out and challenge him that quickly, knowing LSU's outside speed. When we talked to Nick Saban yesterday, one of the things that he felt was important that the receivers early in the ball game challenged the corners of LSU and showed that they could have some success, and of course he got the whole ball wax on one play. Motion by Shedrick Wilson this time again. Give again the ball. He's got an opening, 45-50 down the sidelines. Falk can move, and he will finally be caught from behind inside the Spartan 20-yard line by weak outside linebacker Ike Reese. As we look at the replay, this is the counter gap play. We see the, the guard number 62 pulling in front, and then their H-back number 11, Savoie leading Kevin Falk through the line of scrimmage. That play, along with their wide zone dive player, the two plays at Michigan State is gonna have to stop on the ground. 40 yard gain on that run by Falk. Gives him a first out inside the 20 yard line, make it to Michigan State 19. The give to Kendall Cleveland. One freshman to the next, and they don't lose a thing in that backfield. Both of those freshmen complement each other and complement this offense so well. Falk has got the outstanding speed, and he's the guy that can really burn you on the corner. But Cleveland has got good speed, and he also has the power where he can take that zone dive play. And if he sees the cutback, Jerry, he'll go for that thing back inside. Cleveland led the team with 11 touchdowns this year, 10 rushing and one receiving. They put him in a lot of times on short yardage situations. He's a little bit bigger back, in fact, about 20 pounds larger than Kevin Falk. Cleveland the setback, but here is Tyler looking upfield and has a receiver at the 12 yard line. Once again, it's Eddie Kennison. I, I like what offensive coordinator Morris Watts is doing with his freshman quarterback, Herb Tyler. He came out on the first pass, put him in the sprint out, threw the ball to Kennison on the, the sideline route. Now he comes right back and gives him a short option route that he knows is a high percentage pass. He's got him feeling good. He's got his confidence. He's two for two in the air. And coach, they brought in the man they call Earthquake. 300 pound Anthony McFarland, number 94, and he is in the up back position, fullback, and he leads the way for Falk, who will have the first down, but there's a flag on the play. This is 300 pounds, freshman, and he is going to take the pile all the way into the end zone. Watch him continue. Now, Falk got tackled down on about the six-yard line, but McFarland had the linebacker all the way into the end zone. And the officials talk it over. Anthony McFarland was freshman co-defensive player of the year in the SEC. Offside, on the defense, decline, first down. Today's officials out of the Big 8 Conference, where you just saw referee Terry Turlington there signifying the offsides on Michigan State, which is declined, and the first down will stand. First and goal from the seven-yard line. LSU trying to drive and tie it up. Once again, the pitch back to Cleveland, and he will score. feeling it has to be to be a tailback sitting back there behind a 302 pound fullback we see cleveland number 32 behind 94 mcfarland he clears
clears away along with number 11, Mickey Savoie, for the LSU touchdown. Here is Andre LaFleur for the extra point. He will make it 35 in a row in 1995, and just that quickly, it is 7-7 on this run by Kendall Cleveland. Less than three minutes gone, and we scored twice. Back in a moment. This year, 18,000 people got a new lease on life. They got a new heart or kidney or some other vital organ. But over 41,000 people are still waiting for an organ transplant. And each day, seven of those people die because too few organs are donated. We need your help. Discuss your wishes with your family. Call for an organ donor card today. Your compassion will make a difference. This message brought to you by Willis Knight and Health System of Louisiana, one of America's top 100 hospitals. They have computer-managed suspensions and the exclusive 32-valve V8 Intex system. Lincoln Continental and Lincoln Mark 8. They're encouraging some people to drive a whole lot more. And others, not quite as much. Lincoln, what a luxury car should be. These antiperspirants, they're history, because now there's something that keeps you drier. Sure Ultra Dry. It's a better kind of antiperspirant, a soft solid, with just two clicks. It goes on dry to keep you ultra dry. Just watch. An ordinary solid can flake off, but Sure Ultra Dry vanishes in to form an invisible layer of protection that keeps you drier than ever before. Prove it to yourself. Sure Ultra Dry goes on dry, keeps you ultra dry. The 20th Annual Pole and Weed Eater Independence Bowl is presented by the new Twist and Edge Trimmer Edgers. Two tools in one by Weed Eater. And in part, by Lincoln. What a luxury car should be. Back in Shreveport, Louisiana, there's the red shirt freshman, Kendall Cleveland, who carried it across for the Tigers have tied up here with less than three minutes gone in the first quarter. Both these football teams have averaged scoring over seven, have scored over 70 points this year in the first quarter. And coach, we may have to get some bulbs ready for that scoreboard because this is going to light it up tonight. Wade Ritchie kicking it off and deep in the end zone, eight yards deep, is Derek Mason, and he will kneel down. And Michigan State will start from their own 20-yard line. Jerry, what a tremendous weapon that is because Derek Mason is only 47 yards from being the all-time Big Ten kickoff return leader. He came into this game averaging 26.3 yards per game, so it's great to have that kicker that can start you out at the 20-yard line. That's 78-yard completion on their first possession, the longest pass play for Michigan State University this year. First and 10 for the Spartans, 20-yard line. The give to the tailback, that is Mark Renaud, and he will fight forward for maybe a couple yards, and that's about all. Gabe Northern there from his right defensive end spot to make the stop. James Gilliard in on the stop. Coach, any surprises at all about how this game started out? I know both teams a little bit concerned about trying to regain their timing after a month off. It, it appears that the timing is there. When we talked with Nick Saban, he wanted to throw the ball early. He came out and he did that in his first possession. LSU established the two freshman tailbacks very quickly. Pretty much what those teams, teams have done during the season to be successful. Gain of three on the carry by Renaud. Now Banks back in the shotgun. The inside handoff to Renaud again. And he will get maybe a couple. As Allen Stansbury there, the leading tackler for LSU to make the stop. That'll bring up a third and about five for Michigan State. Michigan State is going to have to throw the ball to be successful. Nick Saban yesterday said they're a little bit different than most teams. They try to set up the running game by throwing the football. Shotgun formation by Banks, wide receivers, Mohammed and Mason. And flags all over the field. There's Mohammed with the reception, 35, 40, and he will dance out to the 43-yard line before he is finally forced out of bounds. Looks like they're going to flag LSU for offsides. There is a flag on the field. Sure that Michigan State would deny the penalty, would decline the penalty, and take the play, putting the ball up over the 45-yard line. That's indeed the signal by our referee, Terry Turlington. Offside on the defense. Decline. First down. As we look at the play again, it appeared that some of the LSU
LSU players stopped playing when it was obvious that they had jumped offside. Tony Banks, knowing that he had the free play, did a nice job of getting the ball to Muhammad for the big reception. First and 10, their own 43-yard line. Banks will give it again to the tailback.
like to have that ball back because if he keeps the ball to the inside, the receiver continue to, can continue to work away from the corner and he would have had a, a big reception. He just threw the ball a little bit off balance, a little bit behind the receiver. Ajia Carter going in for Muhammad, substituting a wide receiver. Carter called a 93-yarder against Indiana last year from Tony Banks. Third and long shotgun by the senior quarterback from Michigan State. Getting some pressure, and he will try to scramble and now throw it downfield, and not a wise toss at all by Banks. That ball almost picked off by Greg Hill, who is the nickelback. Tony Banks certainly had the right idea as he was forced out of the pocket. He saw that his receivers were covered. He does a nice job of knowing that he doesn't want to take the sack, but he made a bad decision as to where he throws the ball. He, all you have to do in that particular situation is get the ball thrown out of bounds and line up and play fourth down. Chris Solani set the kick to the number one punt returner in the SEC, Eddie Kennison. A low end-over-end -end kick hits about the 27-yard line and will roll down toward the 20. Kennison walks away, and that's where Michigan State will down it. And LSU will take over on their own 20. Seven minutes, 39 seconds remain here in the first quarter. It is even up, 7-7 between Michigan State and LSU. We'll be back in just a moment. Stay with us. Does your stomach look like this? In just a few minutes a day, it could look like this. If you start using this. Introducing the revolutionary new Abflex, the first home exercise machine that works the upper, lower, and side abdominals with one simple exercise. Thanks to its patented direct resistance design, the Abflex zeroes in on those hard-to-target abdominal muscles, so it can produce dramatic results like this in just three minutes a day. Four and a half inches I lost. I was 39 and a half, went down to 35. Boom, just like that. Here's the Abflex guarantee. If you don't lose three to six inches and 10 pounds within 30 days, simply return the Abflex system for a full refund. The Abflex, it's the fast way to a firm, flat stomach and a slim, shapely waistline. So call now. Have your credit card ready and call the number on your screen to order your Abflex system right now. Lose three to six inches and 10 pounds within 30 days or return the Abflex system for a full refund of your purchase price. Call now. The two sweetest words in the English language after chorus girl. College hoops. Big Mondays here again. Lots of primo games on the tube again. You better wait till I have to hit the john, my friend. El Grande Mondays here again. Hey, school night, schmool night. You better watch or I'll give you a pop quiz right in the kisser. Eh? Okay, how was that? I smoke platinum. Back in Shreveport, Louisiana, first quarter, 7 minutes, 39 seconds remaining, and it is all even here between LSU and Michigan State. Both teams scoring. If you just join us on their opening possessions, Michigan State, a 78-yard connection in the air. Banks to Muhammad. LSU driving a length of the field for their touchdown. Completion to David LaFleur, the tight end. Howler to LaFleur. talk quite a bit about the freshman tailbacks Kevin Falk and Kendall Cleveland and we also need to mention that this is an all freshman backfield with their quarterback number 14 Herb Tyler started late in the season and had wins against North Texas State, Ole Miss and Arkansas in his three starts as a true freshman. And once again to Cleveland has some running room up over the 30 yard line there to make the stop a sophomore from Cincinnati, Ohio. The fact that Herb Tyler only played four games this year for LSU yet was named to the freshman All-SEC team tells you what kind of athlete he is. And he certainly did a marvelous job. And the reason he was pressed into action, Jamie Howard, their outstanding senior quarterback, had a shoulder injury early in the season against Florida, missed a couple games, and he came back and in their game against Alabama, re-injured the shoulder and is on the sideline tonight, not able to play. This brought Tyler onto the scene, and he responded with three late-season victories for LSU. Offense scored a combined 115 points with Tyler at the quarterback, and he does, he's going to go deep as a receiver and overthrows the outstretched hands of Shedrick Wilson. 
second team all SEC flanker and Wilson had a step on the safety sorry canoe this is one of those plays where you're making a statement as an offensive coordinator to let the Michigan State secondary know two things one your receivers can go deep Shedrick Wilson as well as Eddie Kennison can go deep and they showed that Herb Tyler has the arm strength to get the ball to him on those type of routes. That'll bring up a second and ten just over the 30-yard line. Motion by Falk. And here is Tyler. We'll give it off to Cleveland inside. 35, 36, 37-yard line by Kendall Cleveland. That'll bring up a third and about three. Dan Hackenbrack there to make the stop. Remember, Hackenbrack starting for at middle linebacker spot for their leading tackler, Reggie Garnett. That uh, is going to be an interesting situation as to how long Garnett will stay out of the ball game because when you have a, a player who played as many minutes and as many plays as Garnett uh, has played, I, I think Coach Saban will want to try to uh, have that situation remedy perhaps before the uh, first quarter ends. Both their leading and second leading tacklers for Michigan State not allowed to start because of a curfew violation. Here's a pass thrown behind Wilson. But in all fairness to Tyler, he was getting some heat in a hurry from the outside. Getting some pressure, and he never really had a chance to set his feet. That caused the ball to be thrown behind. But he had an open receiver. They got the matchup they wanted man-to-man. -man. And number six, Wilson, had worked himself open on a shallow crossing route. And that'll bring up a punting situation. Chad Kessler. All-conference punter, best in the SEC, fourth in the nation with a 44.1-yard average. Derek Mason back to receive, and a low line drive spiral sends Mason backpedaling inside the 15-yard line. Dodges one tackler and moves to the outside. Now has running room, Mason 30-35, and that's where he'll finally be bought, brought down by Chad Kessler, the punter, there to make the stop. And if Kessler doesn't make the tackle, it is Katie bar the door. Mason's off to the races. Derek Mason has got all the natural instincts of a great returner. Of course, he's not only their punt returner, but their kickoff returner. He knows how to make people miss. He knows how to find daylight in the coverage team, and he does a tremendous job here of establishing good field position for the Michigan State offense. Great punt by Kessler, 49 yards, and also if he had, didn't make the tackle, then it's 14-7 all of a sudden, but that doesn't happen. Kessler makes the tackle, and Michigan State will take over on the 36-yard line. Banks rolling the pass, has a receiver, Muhammad once again, and he is forced out of bounds by Torrey James. Banks pass complete to Now you can't cover anybody. Now coming up 8.30 p.m. Eastern time on New Year's Eve, it's a NASCAR marathon on ESPN2. 30 hours of fast-paced, exciting NASCAR racing from the 1995 season. From the speed and fast action of the super speedways to the bump and grind of the short tracks. Relive the best NASCAR excitement of the season. That is New Year's Eve, 8.30 p.m. Eastern on the Deuce. Second and six, Michigan State. Give the tailback Renaud, and he is smothered at the line of scrimmage. Allen Stansberry there, maybe a half a yard at best. LSU gives you a lot of looks on defense, Jerry. They're constantly going from an odd front to an even front, and then they use their strong safety, much like an outside linebacker, to create a lot of eight-man fronts. They're awfully tough to run against, but you have to be able to do a spread that eight-man front look out, throw the ball short in front of their uh, corners. Third and five, Banks in the shotgun, upfield. As a receiver, Nigia Carter, and it's good enough for the first down. Banks came right back to it. He saw the eight-man front, the three-deep secondary, and he came right back to Nigia Carter on the quick slant in front of the corner. Nice job, nice catch. Carter going up, keeping his body between himself and the coverage corner, number eight, Torrey James. One of the outstanding cover corners in the SEC and a young man that's going to be playing in the Senior Bowl later this month. That young man there, Banks, 5 for 7, passing 123 yards and a touchdown. And we're still in the first quarter. A lot of the scouts on hand watching it from the NFL think 
he will probably go at least maybe in the in the second round, maybe the third round. They like his size, his speed, his his poise. A young man who was a baseball player drafted by the Minnesota Twins out of high school was one of the real promising shortstop prospects in the Minnesota organization, but then he had rotator cuff surgery, went on to junior college, got back into the game of football, and then has come in a two-year period of time to have an outstanding career over 3,700 yards in just two years. The LSU staff assisting Colby Crawford off the field, they're starting strong safety. Out of Orlando, Florida, he got up and walked off the field. Once again, has a receiver and a great defensive play by Alan Stansberry out of Baton Rouge. Stansberry, very active linebacker, 6'1", 224 pounds, runs extremely well. He did a nice job of reading the eyes of quarterback Tony Banks, kept working in the direction that Banks was going to throw the ball and then accelerated to get his hand on the ball once it was in the air. Here's a look at Stansbury, the junior, led the team uh, in sacks from a linebacker spot. Six sacks, most ever by an LSU inside linebacker, set a record for the school this year. Second and ten, the inside handoff to Renaud, has an opening, 45-40, cuts to the outside, and that's where he'll be chased out of bounds, about the 31-yard line. Clarence Lenton coming up from his free safety spot to chase Mark Renaud out of bounds after a gain of 20. Mark Renaud is a, a young redshirt sophomore out of Deerfield Beach, Florida, one of the most highly recruited high school players a couple years ago, and he's just really now starting to come into his own, and we see his ability to find the soft spot, make people miss him at the line of scrimmage. He gained almost 1,000 yards in his redshirt sophomore year. Needed just 22 yards to become the 12th Spartan ever to rush for over 1,000 yards in the season. He got 20 right there. First and 10, Michigan State driving once again. Score all tied up, 7-7. Flags fly, Renaud once again the ball carrier. And Pat Rogers there on the stop for no game. Got to get a motion penalty against the Spartans, so that'll bring it back five yards. There's a flag on the flight. Take a look at Terry Turlington, the referee here, officiating crew out of the Big 8 conference. Illegal motion on the offense, five yards, previous spot, repeat first down. 20th annual Poland Wheat Eater Independence Bowl here in Shreveport, Louisiana. Bill Lewis and you're truly Jerry Punch bringing you this action. First exciting schools, Big Ten, representative Michigan State, the SEC school, LSU. Two teams have finished the season, identical record, 6-4-1. Back to Denico, conference records of 4-3-1. Hoping to get their program back on track after a couple of years of uh, they did not have winning seasons. Once again, back to pass, getting some pressure. He has Mason in the end zone, and, well, he cannot hang on. One official signals touchdown, but he was shielded. The other two say, no, I did not hang on to the football. Denard Walker, the cornerback there on the coverage, but Mason had a step, and if he could have hung on to the football, it would have been six. Once again, LSU play a man-to-man -man coverage, and one of the keys is to be able to give your quarterback time until the receivers can beat that one-on-one -on -one coverage. And we saw that uh, number 24, Walker, was beaten there at the end of that route by number 80, Derek Mason. Banks was getting some pressure. Able to get that one off. Michigan State, second and 15 on the motion penalty. High formation. And Banks will give it to the tailback, Renaud. 35-30, and Renaud up to the 25-yard line. It will be short of the first down by about six yards. Great block up front by the fullback, Garrett Gould, the freshman out of Troy, Michigan, the spring Mark Renaud. Earlier today, at the Georgia Dome in Atlanta, there's a score of the Heritage Bowl. Southern, 30, Florida, 25. An exciting finish in that one. There's lots of bowl action yet to come later tonight. We're going to San Diego at the Jack 
Murphy Stadium for a big one in the Plymouth Holiday Bowl. Third and four, Michigan State trying to keep their drive alive. Banks back to pass, has the screen set up. 10-5, four-yard line. And Hard Walker there to make the stop on Mark Renaud. A gain of 21 yards. Perfectly executed screen. Offense coordinator Gary Tranquil has the perfect call. LSU came with the blitz. One of the best plays you could have called against the blitz is the screen because you get the blockers out in front and there's only one man covering the tailback, Mark Renaud. There were three offensive linemen out in front. Great call. Nice job by Renaud running after the catch. High formation for the Spartans. First and goal and a fumble on the center exchange. And Banks drops the football and LSU will recover the fumble at about the three-yard line. And Alan Stansbury there from his outside linebacker spot, the junior from Baton Rouge. And a turnover takes a scoring opportunity away from the Spartans. What a critical mistake, and it appeared that Tony Banks pulled out just a little bit too soon. You saw the ball come up as the hands were being pulled out. Number 43, Allen Stansbury, LSU's outstanding linebacker, made the recovery. What a critical mistake. And Jerry, that's one of those things you wonder if the, the layoff and the number of times that you like to take that center quarterback exchange might have had something to do with that mishap. Second turnover of the game here for Michigan State. This time the handoff to Cleveland, Kendall Cleveland, the redshirt freshman. Trying to fight his way up near the four-yard line. Carl Reeves there, junior from Oxford, Michigan, to make the stop. There's a look at Carl Reeves. Started seven games this year, including the last four. 74 tackles, third leading tackler on the team. That's how active he was late in the year in just seven starts. This is one of the interesting matchups that occur in a football game. LSU takes the ball over deep in their territory. What they're trying so hard to do is to make at least one first down before they have to punt the ball. Michigan State wants to hold it right there, deny them the first down, make them punt from the end zone so they're guaranteed good field position. And Tyler will call a timeout and think it over a little bit. Apparently did not get an idea what the play he was he needed to call. We told you that we got some exciting bowl action following us here tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern time. It's the Plymouth Holiday Bowl from Jack Murphy Stadium in San Diego. As the 10th ranked Kansas State Wildcats take on the Rams of Colorado State. All the exciting action coming up tonight, 9 p.m. Eastern. Brad Nestler, Gary Danielson, and Adrian Karsten. If you just joined us earlier today, head coach, Spartan head coach for Michigan State, Nick Saban, said he was going to discipline four of his key starters for a curfew violation that actually occurred earlier in the week. Two of the starters on the offense and two on defense. The two defensive starters, Reggie Garnett and Marvin Wright, are the first and second leading tacklers, the two leading defenders they had on the Spartan football team. A lot of courage by Nick Saban also, uh, but you got to admire him for sticking by his rules. You really do. You, ad you admire him, you respect him. He has a few team rules. They're important to him. They're important to his team, and he enforced them against starting players. The one effect of that uh, situation occurred earlier in the game when quarterback Tony Banks was hit from the backside by Gabe Northern, the SEC, all-SEC defensive end from LSU, beat Bob Denton. They're starting left tackle. One of the players suspended. His backup, Gabe Mudge, was beaten off of the corner, causing uh, that turnover for Michigan State. And that's the only real visual effect that we've been able to see thus far in the game. Second down, deep in their own territory. Cleveland again, the handoff, up over the 5, 6, 7, up near the 10-yard line. Sorry, Canoe there from a safety spot to make the stop. They will be short of the first down. Talking about Nick Saban again, Coach. You know, he said in the press conference yesterday, he said, I want to come to this program. He said, George Perlis left me with a lot of talent, a lot of kids with a lot of ability, and I wanted to sort of come in and do things my way, and I wanted to build some character. I wanted to instill some confidence in these kids, and when you build character, these kids, you give them the ability to make the correct decisions, either socially, athletically, and academically. And he certainly followed up with that in that situation with the discipline uh, as far as his four players in this ballgame is concerned. Third the couple. And Tyler will hand it off once again, and up near the 15-yard line. That should be enough for the first down is Kendall Cleveland. And that's 
that's exactly what LSU wanted to do here was sustain the ball on their offense like they did against Arkansas. A couple of long drives early in that last game of the year gave LSU momentum that they never relinquished. Anytime you start out first and ten inside your own ten yard line, you can't imagine how critical that first down is on that drive. Also, we see why the LSU coaches like Kendall Cleveland so well. He's the guy that's really going to attack the defense. He's a 215 pound redshirt freshman running back, and they put the ball in his hands to get him off the goal line. That's about the quietest that South End Zone crowd has been all day. This predominantly partisan LSU crowd, the sellout crowd, and a lot of them from nearby Baton Rouge. And once again, a mishandled snap. And a flag on the play.
launching a new alliance between Western Pacific Airlines and Thrifty Car Rental will bring more of what travelers want above all, low rates, making Thrifty and Western Pacific birds of a feather. For car rental reservations, call your professional travel agent or 1-800-4-CARS. Your neighborhood Thrifty Car Rental, historically known for low rates. Shreveport, Louisiana, after a quarter, we're all tied up, Michigan State and LSU, and that's a young man who's all tied up inside, waiting to get into this football game. Scott Green, two-time MVP, and he's the senior fullback, one of four players, disciplined, unable to start this ball game for missing curfew early in the week, and he was told by some of the coaches that we might put you guys in early in the second quarter, so we'll let you know. We'll keep an eye on Green. LSU, shotgun formation by Tyler, and the ball is swatted and picked off by Carl Reeves, and Reeves at the 20-15, and it's finally caught from behind by Eddie Kennison to save the touchdown inside the five, marking the three-yard line. Carl Reeves is one of the outstanding athletes on the Michigan State football team. He's a 6'4", 227-pound junior from Oxford, Michigan. He's one of the most active players on their special teams outstanding linebacker and he does a great job once again of reading the eyes of the quarterback and when the ball was in the air breaking to it and then an exceptional job of putting that ball away becoming a running back and getting it down inside the five yard line both teams now with two turnovers eye formation and again to the fullback his first carry is scott green and he will score First carry of the game by the senior from Canandaigua, New York. Two-time MVP for the Spartans after being disciplined, not able to play the first quarter. He comes in, takes the handoff, and will carry the ball in from four yards away. This is what Michigan State does so well on the goal line. They put the ball in the hands of Scott Green. 16 rushing touchdowns during the season, and I know he feels good after the discipline situation to be able to go in and to help his teammates take an early second quarter lead. And the extra point attempt is blocked from Chris Gardner, and they will scramble and cover the ball on the, the six-yard line. So on the touchdown by Scott Green, a three-yard scamper by Green, makes it 13, Michigan State, LSU 7, with 14.43 remaining here in the first half. There's no place on earth that I'd rather be out in the open where it's all plain to see. If it's gonna get done, it's up to you and to me. And there's no place that I'd rather be. sales event one word at a time. Magnum, as in Magnum Engines, as in Dodge Ram, ranked most appealing pickup by J.D. Power & Associates. Power, overall the most powerful line of truck engines on the planet. Sales, save up to $670. Or lease a well-equipped Ram for $269 a month. And event, it's the first time America's hottest pickups have ever been on sale like this. At America's Truck Stop, the new Dodge.
15, Harris Kennison at the 20, 25, has an opening to the outside, and he is at the 40, 45, one man to beat, and Kennison will score 30, 25, 20, 15, and mark it six for the Tigers.
see if we can see how that football actually came back on the field after the extra point. There it comes. Well, they were throwing snowballs in New York last week, and they're throwing footballs here in Shreveport. The ball actually was being returned from the stands from the previous extra point on the previous play. Kevin Falk takes the kickoff, 25-30, oh, not again, 35-40, 42-yard line, and Falk has one guy to beat and one more cut, and suddenly we would have Kick three, three, by number three kickoff Falk. returns for a touchdown. Eccles there to make the stop. 32-yard return by Kevin Falk. Jerry, you look around the stadium, nobody wants to sit down. They don't want to miss anything. They just stayed up from kickoff to kickoff to kickoff. All week long, the local press here and both coaches talking about how they really emphasize special teams play, that this game may not be won at the line of scrimmage, but more on the vertical field position and special teams. And boy, what a prediction that was. I don't think they had the idea of that vertical field position being all the way into the end zone as we've seen it. And here's a flanker around to Kennison, but it's diagnosed and he cannot make the tackle. 40, 45 yard line, and Kennison will tumble up near the 50. Before Reggie Garnett, now in the football game, he was the leading tackler for the Spartans this year. Missed Carried the first Andy quarter, Kennison. and now playing here in the second quarter. Reggie Garnett making the. You like the call of Mars Watts here? Obviously, the excitement the level is now, tremendous in the stadium, and he tried to take advantage of it, feeling like that Michigan State defense would really be flowing with the zone dive play, but they recovered, stayed at home, and made a nice play on Kennison. Second and four for LSU. Trying to drive once again and tie this football game up. Gives the ball. He has running room on the outside. And it cuts it up at the 25-yard line. And Falk will score. The official pointed to the sidelines and said, no, he did not step out of bounds. And Kevin Falk takes it in from 51 yards out. And with the extra point coming up momentarily, once again, we're going to be tied here in Shreveport. Jerry, I don't know if we can see it, but Kevin Falk obviously makes a great run, but he had a tremendous block by number six, the flanker on the play. Andre LaFleur on for the extra point. It's the counter gap play, a tremendous block right there. We saw right at the end of the play by Wilson. The extra point is good, and once again, we're all tied at 21 apiece here in Shreveport, Louisiana. 13 minutes and 11 seconds remaining in the second quarter, and we have scored 42 points here. Folks, stay tuned. This is going to be a barn burner. Back in a moment. Let's look at the Magnum Power Sales Event, one word at a time. Magnum, as in Magnum Engines, as in Dodge Dakota Pickup, a little bigger, a lot better. Power. We're talking Dodge. Overall, the most powerful line of truck engines on the planet. Sales. How about up to $3,000 off Dakota? An event? Well, that means this special offer ends sooner than later. At America's Truck Stop, the new Dodge. Car rental was born at the airport. Not long after man's first flight arrived. But soon, man discovered reasons to rent that had nothing to do with flying. That's when thrifty car rental got rolling right in the neighborhood. Such convenience has made thrifty's historically low rates a way of life, whether or not you happen to be flying. Your neighborhood thrifty car rental, historically known for low rates. Wrangler jeans are soft and comfortable. And they get more soft and comfortable every time you wash them. Wrangler. Real, comfortable jeans. Pine Lake. Three friends. Three pair of Wrangler jeans. Everybody's comfortable. Even the fish. Wrangler. Real, comfortable jeans. Back in Shreveport, Louisiana, there's a look at Kevin Falk, the young man who just scampered 51 yards and tied up here. In the 20th annual Poland Wheat Eater Independence Bowl, 51-yard touchdown run ties a bowl record. The young man who is a true freshman from Corencro, Louisiana, five carries, 102 yards, and a touchdown. Making up for that fumble earlier in the turnover deep in their territory. Clay Ritchie kicks it off. A low tumbler down to Derek Mason. They're going to give Mason a shot to catch it in the air, and Mason still dances over the 25. And then it's hammered out of bounds at about the 27-yard line by Kenny.
start here to the 20th annual Polo Weed Eater Independence Bowl. If you joined us, if you didn't join us in the first quarter, you missed the first couple series, you missed uh, 14 points. Michigan State scored on a 78-yard strike, their second offensive play. LSU drives back to tie it at 7-all in the second quarter. Well, all I can say is back-to-back -back kickoff returns. Running play for maybe a yard. Jabbar Threets. Roddy in there to make the stop. Kevin Falk, the ball carrier. Coach, I don't think I've ever seen that much excitement in that short of period of time in any college football game that I've witnessed. Jerry, in all the years that I've been in coaching, I can't ever remember back-to-back -back kickoff returns and then have a third one, Kevin Falk breaking the almost 40 yards. Uh, a tremendous uh, excitement to the football game, and it's, it's great that we have that kind of excitement in front of this sellout crowd. And a 92-yarder by Kennison, a 100-yarder by Mason, and a 51-yard run by Falk as the whistles blow. And that will be a delay a game against LSU. And you talked about, Coach, the concern from the LSU coaching staff about their true freshman quarterback, about getting some of the plays in. They're going to wear that little wrist, Coach, so he can look at the play and try to make it simple. Well, they just signal in a Red ball. Power. Ball again, it's costing them some valuable time. This is the, the second time now they've had a delay of the game penalty, and offensive coordinator Morris Watts told us a humorous situation in Herbert Tyler's first start against North Texas. They went with the wristband the first play of the game. They were late coming out of the huddle. They called timeout. Tyler came to the sideline. He said, what's wrong? He said, Coach, I got my wristband on upside down. Can't read the plays. <laughs> and he gets this one to Falk, who dances and doodles his way up over the 20. And Falk has got one man to beat downfield, 50-45. Cuts it back, 35-30. And finally, Ike Reese, the linebacker, had the angle and is able to catch Falk as he cut it back. And once again, a long game. Reese finally tracks it down. Kevin yeah, Falk is certainly saving his best for last as far as this freshman year is concerned. Just an outstanding job of taking the zone dive, finding the soft spot, back behind the offensive center, some great blocks on the backside, some great blocks downfield. Backside tackle number 74, Sean Wells was the one that really opened up the cutback for Fox to get back into that soft spot. Also, another outstanding block by wide receiver, number six, Shedrick Wilson, the second time he's made a key block downfield for Falk. Take a look at those numbers. Seven rushes, 170 yards. That was a 68-yard run by Falk. He gets a breather, and another outstanding freshman comes in, and he turns the ball loose. And the officials there will say the ball was down, and Michigan State will protest. They're saying his knee was down, and it'll, be, it'll bring up a second down. At Kendall Cleveland, the ball carrier. Coach, talking about Kevin Falk. They made the point to us early in the week that his name is Kevin Falk. He is not related whatsoever to Marshall Falk. Marshall from New Orleans, Kevin from Corinne, Pro, Louisiana, which is uh, in the western part of the state near Lafayette. They may not be related, but they look very similar on the football field. They certainly do, and I think it's important hey! to, to note that Kevin Falk is certainly going to make a name for himself. Uh, I know he'll be compared throughout probably his whole career with Marshall, but he is one of the real outstanding young running backs in all of college football. And Tyler gets smothered under, back up to the 35-yard line. That'll bring up a third and long. Take a look at Thunder and Lightning. That's the nickname for the two freshman running backs, Falk and Cleveland. Let's see what they've done. Falk, seven rushes, 170 yards, one touchdown. Not bad at all. Cleveland, eight rushes, 34 yards, and a touchdown. So uh, between the two freshman running backs, yeah, I said freshman. One's a true freshman. That's Falk. He's a true freshman, number three there. And Cleveland is a redshirt freshman, number 32. Between those two, they have over 200 yards of offense just between the two of them. Two touchdowns to go with it, and we're not even at halftime yet, uh, Jerry. Well, if you're Jerry DiNardo, you got to be smiling, thinking about the future of LSU football with those young on the football team. Okay, the screen to the tailback Cleveland is diagnosed by Ike Reese and maybe a yard gain, and they're saying they got a hold of the ball, but officials will beg to differ. Early in the game, I'm very impressed. You know, we talked an awful lot about the speed of the LSU defense coming into the game. I'm impressed with the way Michigan State's two outside linebackers run. Number 44, Ike Reese, who we just saw making that play. And then we have seen the effects of Carl Reeves and the way he can chase that football. Outstanding speed for the Spartans at their linebacker positions. All SEC 
SEC punter, Chad Kessler, back to kick to Derek Mason deep, standing about his own 10-yard line. Flags fly, low floater will hit about the 7-yard line and be picked up at the 1. A great move, Chris Beard, the backup flag to their own special teams to down that football on the 1-yard line. But there was a flag on the play as the ball was snapped. procedure penalty called against LSU and that definitely will bring it back because Michigan State will want that ball kicked over again. Jerry, what a critical special teams mistake here. Michigan State would have started out with the ball on the one yard line. It still might end up there after this punt, but this could be a big mistake as Illegal far as that vertical field Six position that you've worked so hard to establish with your special teams. We told you we had a sellout crowd here at Shreveport, Louisiana. It's gotten quiet here. I think the fans are exhausted. <laughs> I think they are worn out. After after back-to-back -back kickoff returns, a 51-yard run by Kevin Falk, and we got some folks, uh, but hey, more special teams play, so folks, you may want to get on your feet. This might be a good one here. As LSU will call a timeout and think about it, so we'll take timeout with them. Eight minutes and one second playing here in the first half. We're all tied. 21 each. Back in a moment. For all the different cars in the world, there's really only one tire and accessory store. Hertz, because we carry a full line of Kelly tires, like the Aqua Tour, a premium all-season radial that comes with an 80,000-mile warranty. What's more is the service at Kirk's is fast and friendly. And that's not about to change. At this special time of the year, all of us at Harvest Sugarland in Plaquemine wish to extend a joyous holiday greeting. We now thank you for your patronage throughout 95, a community support leading to our best year ever. In gratitude, we invite you to enjoy tremendous year-end savings on our full line of cars and trucks. Ford, Lincoln, Mercury, Chrysler, Plymouth, Dodge, Jeep, Eagle, all close out priced for the close of 95 at the all-new Harvest Sugarland, Highway 1 in Plaquemine. The 1995 NASCAR Winston Cup Circuit, a real round trip. ESPN2 presents a special year-end television event. Eight Winston Cup races, 30 hours of speed, power, and excitement. A NASCAR marathon of the most thrilling races of 1995. Race into the new year with 30 hours of NASCAR, beginning Sunday night at 8.30 p.m. only on ESPN2. If you don't have ESPN2, call your local cable operator or satellite provider. Back in Shreveport, Louisiana, we've got a barn burner here. 42 points have been scored, and we're still in the second quarter. Yes, eight minutes left to go in the second quarter, and even he can't believe it. That's the Spartan from Michigan State. Uh, he's all fired up watching the action. LSU having to re-kick after a procedure penalty. Kessler gets a good one off again, and it will hit on the four-yard line and be down at the four. So back-to-back -back outstanding kicks. By the all SCC punter Chad Kessler. Great bowl game still coming your way tomorrow. We go to Memphis, Tennessee at 12 p.m. Eastern Time. It's the Liberty Bowl. Stanford 7 3 and 1 taking on the Pirates of East Carolina. And that's to be followed by the Peach Bowl. I'll be in Atlanta tomorrow night, 8 p.m. Eastern Time for Virginia taking on Georgia. Going to be a hard act to follow. I thought that bowl game early in the week on ESPN, the Copper Bowl, was something 96 points. So we may beat that one here. We're still in the first half, and 42 have been scored. Michigan State deep in their own territory and smothered at about the one-yard line. He will be thrown for about a two-yard loss. Chuck Wiley is there. Michigan State trying to get the, the ball out of the shadow of their own goal line, an important possession for them. A, a tremendously important possession, and this is where LSU's defense tries to smother you. They're going to get 10 people up close to the line of scrimmage. Their corners will be tighter to the line of scrimmage than their linebackers. The only player playing deep will be the free safety going about 10 yards in the middle of the field. Second down from their own one-yard line, and he is stoned at the line of scrimmage. And LSU's players are saying, signaling safety, but not quite. Torrey James from his left quarterback spot, and as you said, Coach, the speed here really taking over for LSU. Inside, able
able to gamble a little bit deep in the Michigan State territory. The last four games of the year, this program, LSU's Tigers, allowing six and a half points only total in the last four football games per game. What they do in this position in the field, they simply put more people on the line of scrimmage than the offensive line can possibly block. There are ten players up close to the line of scrimmage. Third and about 14. They get 13 from their own one yard line. Need to get up almost to the 20 yard line. Banks rolling to his right. Has a receiver upfield. It's Muhammad, and Muhammad is about two yards shy of the first down. Well, he will, he will have the first down. Denard Walker there to make the kick, make the uh, make the tackle. Tremendous call by offensive coordinator Gary Tranquil. And it also shows his confidence in his senior quarterback, Tony Banks, and how well he handles himself in the end zone. Very patient, steps up inside his protection and finds Muhammad on the sideline. Big completion, big first down to get him off the goal line. A lot of poise and composure by the senior quarterback from San Diego, California, dancing around on his own end zone, making the completion for the first down. He has a little bit of breathing room now, eye formation. They will give it to the tailback for now. 25. He has an opening, 35, and he is finally brought down from behind by Clarence Linton and Alan Stansbury, the free safety and outside linebacker, but a great block by the fullback, Travis Reese. Great look at Renaud and his ability to get outside behind the block of number 45, Garrett Gould, the 6'2", 230-pound freshman fullback who's playing quite a bit uh, tonight in that fullback spot. There's a look at Mark Renaud, the sophomore tailback, eight carries, 63 yards here in the first half. Back to throw once again, Banks looking deep, has a receiver wide open downfield and just overthrows Derek Mason who had beaten the defender by about three yards. Mason wide open on the 15-yard line and Banks got a little bit too much air under it. Derek Mason does a good job. He came down and, and with a little hesitation move that we didn't quite pick up on camera and then just accelerated and ran right by Torrey James playing that famous man-to-man -man coverage of the LSU defense. And remember, Torrey James considered to be the best cover man in the LSU secondary, a secondary that led the SEC in cash efficiency defense this year and was sixth in the nation. That's how quick Mason was to get by him. Second and ten, and flags fly. Both sides of the off offense and defense jumping off. We'll let the officials sort it out. Dead ball, false start on the offense. Five yards, previous spot. And it'll cost Michigan State five. Five minutes, 55 seconds remain here in the 20th annual Poland we need our Independence Bowl, and they're standing up. Even the players who aren't able to play don't want to miss a play in this one. There's the backup play kicker, Arisic. Some of the Michigan State players down here enjoying the great climate and atmosphere in Shreveport, Louisiana. Banks on the inside, handoff to Green, the fullback, and he is up near the 40-yard line. Chuck Wiley, left tackle there to make the stop on Green. Jerry, what Michigan State has done now a couple times in each of their last two series is they've lined up number 45, Garrett Gould, at the fullback position, and Scott Green, who is normally their fullback, is taking a couple snaps from the tailback spot. And what it does, it gives them a co good complement at the tailback position. Mark Renaud is, is known as an outside speed type of runner. Scott Green at 230 pounds is a much more north and south power type guy. Good complement to the Spartan offense. Michigan State player down on that as the trainers are out on the field to take a look. And that is the ball carrier, Scott Green, able to get up and walk off with the trainers. Boy, what a force he has been for the Spartans for two years, two-time. MVP for Michigan State, just the fourth player in Spartan history to win back-to-back -back Most Valuable Player Awards. The last guy to do it, Coach, Lorenzo White. Pretty, pretty good tailback good, himself. Pretty good tailback himself. You're right. And this year, Scott has been so effective. He's had 16 touchdowns, 104 points. That was second best in the big team and number four in the NCAA. Mohammed in motion, shotgun formation by Tony Banks. Third and long, nine yards to go. Bank looks upfield, has a receiver, and that'll be good enough for the first down, depending on the spot. They will spot it near the 50, and that was Derek Mason. Mason 
average reception for about an 11-yard gain, good enough for the first. We're going to see the effect of the speed of Mason being able to push the cornerback, number 24, Walker. This creates separation. Tony Banks doing an outstanding job of avoiding the rush. He stepped outside of the rush, got the ball to Mason as he made the break. LSU secondary showing a little more respect for Derek Mason after he's run by him a couple times and uh, on some deep threats, so they're giving him a little room and enabled him to make the 11-yard reception for the first down. Michigan State at midfield. The give to the tailback for Renaud, and he will fall forward for about two and a half. Brian LaSalle, the Michigan State right guard, limping. As he gets up and moves back to the huddle. Academic All-Big Ten player. Jerry, it's very obvious that what you said is so true that the speed of the Michigan State wide receivers has certainly got the respect uh, of the LSU corners because they're showing that tight press coverage, but on the snap of the ball, they are bailing out of there and respecting the speed. And that one upfield, Nigia Carter, down to the 40-yard line, to number 81, and Torrey James there to make the stop. Torrey James College game day bowl special coming your way Monday, 10 a.m. Eastern time. Chris Lee and Craig preview the biggest college football bowl day of the year with a special look at the Outback Steakhouse Bowl coming your way from Tampa, Florida.
John Silver's Flaky Fish. The batter dip twist no mouth can resist. Pick up our crunchy golden shrimp or tender all-white chicken. Famous batter dip fish, chicken, and shrimp. Three delicious ways to amaze your mouth. Only at Long John Silver's. Oh, yes, it's the amazing 25 cent shrimp sale. Golden batter dip shrimp, now just a quarter each, no limit. Hey, get poppin'. This is a taste you can't resist. I say, put a can in every hand. Do the Pringles twist like this. Pop a top well, keep it fresh, slip it in. Grab a stack of your favorite snack. Let the fun begin. There's no stopping once you're caught. Hey, wake up. Don't get caught holding that bag. Hey, that's no party. Greasy pieces are. Independent Stadium in Streetport, Louisiana. Our score all tied 21 apiece here as we approach the first half, and that's the man, Kevin Falk, that these folks in Tigerland are going to be watching for the next four years. True freshman. That young man is impressive. Seven rushes, 170 yards, averaging 24.3 yards every time he touches the football. And they give it to the redshirt freshman tailback, Kendall Cleveland. He will get maybe a yard at best. Marvin right there from the left safety spot to make the tackle. Marvin Wright, one of those players who did not start the game as a result of a disciplinary maneuver by head coach for he was one of the four players that had a curfew violation. There's the total yards. Boy, what an offensive shootout we've had here in the first half. There's a look at Marvin Wright, second leading tackler for the Spartans. Missed the handoff once again to Cleveland, left side, 21, 22 yards, maybe a couple of yards. And that's all for Kendall Cleveland. Let's go out to Tempe, Arizona and check in with Mike Tirico. Michael? All right, Dr. Jerry, coming up on the new Dodge Halftime Report, highlights of the earlier bowl game, the Sun Bowl, Iowa and Washington, about the Fiesta Bowl, updated news. And we'll tell you the special teams factor of this game. Lee and Craig will look into that. And we'll talk about Gary Barnett, a coach in the limelight this bowl week. All coming up from Tempe at halftime. We'll see you then, Dr. Jerry. Thank you very much, Michael. We'll look forward to those reports from Tempe, Arizona. Boy, well, it's going to be hard to uh, have a better one than this one, but a lot of folks talking about that game coming up on January 2nd, Coach. It's tremendously exciting for the sport of college football. Anytime you have an opportunity to have a true national championship game like we have in Tempe, you've got two great football teams, two outstanding football coaches, and it's captured the imagination and the excitement of the entire college football world. Should be a great game. Now, you've been there on postseason play as Jerry DiNardo is enjoying it here. You see him, the LSU coach, on the sidelines. What do you tell your kids when you uh, when you you come to the postseason play? You want to let them have a good time, but you also want to let them understand that there's got to be some serious tone. You've got to put that game face on the night before the game. A couple things are important. Number one is that the bowl game is a reward for an outstanding season, so you do want your players to come. You want them to have fun. You want them to enjoy the hospitality that's provided by the bowl committee and the, the bowl site people. But at the same time, you want them to work. You want them to understand when it's time to work and how they have to work. And then as you get into the 48 hours before the game, the focus goes to the football game. That's the real reason you're here. Third and eight, and Falk gets the handoff. He will get maybe a yard, yard and a half. And Michigan State will use another timeout as Michigan State had called timeout a moment ago hoping to be able to keep LSU deep in their own territory and maybe get the ball back here as the time runs out in the first half. One of the other things that's important uh, in a bowl uh, situation is that you come in and you have an opportunity to take advantage of all the things uh, that are here to take advantage of, but then you, you have a chance to really focus on the game. Both of these coaches set as a goal to get to the bowl game. We had an opportunity to talk to uh, both of them yesterday, and that was no longer enough. They got here, and then both of them wanted to win the game. So as they got into that day before the game mode, they were excited because it was game time and an opportunity to win a bowl game in their first year uh, at the head coaching position of their respective schools. They said their first goal was to get here, and their second goal was to win it. Kessler, who has who launched a 64 yard this year, will not get off a very good kick. It's a great roll, and down about the 35 yard line, Derek Mason there 
to pick it up and try to get some yardage. A 41-yard kick, most of it on the ground after the roll, and a four-yard return. We told you we had some excitement early in the second half, and we're going to show you some of that excitement. Eddie Kennison from 92 yards away. And watch the speed here. He's a four-time track All-American, a sprinter on the LSU track team, and once he found the daylight, he just turned it on and outran the entire coverage team. And Banks on the completion upfield on the 50-yard line. Derek Mason makes the catch and able to get out of bounds. Pass complete to Derek Mason. Coming up at halftime, the new Dodge halftime report. Henderson is signed. We're going to have news from the Fiesta Bowl and the coach in the limelight, Gary Barnett at Northwestern. And there's some Tiger fans that have come from Tiger Land, about 450 miles south of here. Your mama must be so proud. Young man enjoying supporting his college. And once again, a, a rifle shot to Derek Mason. That's about an 11-yard gain. They're going to mark it right at the spot of the first down. Less than a minute to play here in the first half. And the officials will call a timeout for the spot and possibly a measurement. Second play in a row that Tony Banks has been able to find Derek Mason, and Banks really showing he's got a gun. You really have to be impressed with the way he can stand in the pocket and make all the throws. He's thrown two consecutive uh, deep out routes, both of them with tremendous velocity. He's simply not given the LSU secondary an opportunity to react and break on the football. Got to give Nick Saban a lot of credit. They lost the opening game by 40 points in Nebraska. That program could really have gone down the tubes, and he got his kids together and said, we're going to build this program. We're going to go one game at a time. And after that opening, that devastating loss to Nebraska, they won six of the next ten to play their way here under the Independence Bowl. Banks will scramble 40-35, and they may need to use their final timeout as Stansbury there to make the stop. told you early in the second half that Eddie Kennison ran 92 yards for a touchdown while on the subsequent kickoff, take a look here at Derek Mason's 100-yard effort. Derek had a football coming to him from both directions, one being thrown out of the stands as well as the one being kicked at him. He caught the right one, and he knew what to do with it, and you just marvel at the kick return ability of both Mason and Kennison in this game, and they've not done it just tonight, Jerry. These two young guys have done it all season for their football teams. There's a look at Derek Mason, Big Ten's all-time leading kickoff returner. He surpassed Mel Anderson at Minnesota, who had set the record at 1,965 yards, needed just 47 yards, and he did that all in just one return a moment ago. Three seconds remaining here in the first half. 20th annual Poland Weeder Independence Bowl. First ever sellout here in Street Point for this ball game in 20 years. And all these fans have certainly gotten their money's worth. Michigan State now out of timeouts. LSU still has one to spare. Line of scrimmage, the LSU 33-yard line. Banks looking upfield. Has a receiver. And he juggles it and can't quite hang on. That is Derek Mason. He had Mason and Muhammad about four Mason yards apart, Derek both Mason open. Is incomplete. Third down. That'll bring up a third down situation. Jerry, we might look for Tony Banks to try to go deep and take a shot at the LSU end zone. He's thrown the ball up in front of those corners. The coverage has gotten tighter with each throw. Look for possibly an out and up or maybe a little hesitation in the deep ball. Try to get it in the end zone one time before the half. Mason has beaten Torrey James a couple of times deep. This time he tries the inside route, and he can't hang on. He gets a lick. He takes a little bit of punishment there from Torrey James, the cornerback senior from Marrero, Alabama, or Louisiana. Torrey James brings up fourth down. Well, Coach, fourth down. Line of scrimmage. Uh, I'm not sure you want to try to kick one from here. I'm not sure your kicker 
Chris Gardner's longest of the year, 37 yards. You're definitely out of his range here, Jerry. What you need to do is take a shot at it. You still do have enough time to get the first down and another couple plays after that. It would be a 49-yard field goal had they attempted it from here. They will not. Fourth down. Banks looking downfield. Has Mohammed over the middle. 30, 25, 20, and he will get out of bounds with 15 seconds left in the first half and the first down. Michigan State does a nice job here of running the double crossing route. We're going to see two receivers cross right in the middle of the screen, trying to rub off the man-to-man -man coverage that they were getting from the LSU secondary. Fifteen seconds of play in the first half. Our score all tied at 21 apiece. Michigan State now driving. That was Muhammad's fifth reception, 129 yards and a touchdown. Looking downfield, and he will be thrown. He gets rid of the football, but gave Northern the two times. But since it's all SEC defensive end there, to put the hurry on Tony Banks. Gabe Northern had nine sacks this year. He has 21 sacks for his career at LSU. We mentioned earlier he's a first-team All-SEC. He's going to be playing a little bit later in the Senior Bowl. But one of the things he is most proud of is he is carrying a 4.0 grade point average at LSU. Just an outstanding student athlete. Second and 10. 11 seconds remain in the first half. Banks trying to look toward the end zone. He will toss it there and just over the hands of Derek Mason. Had Mason made the catch, he probably would have been out of the back of the end zone, so it's all academic, but... Mason had a step once again on Torrey James. Take a look again at Tony Banks throwing it out of the shotgun, trying to get the ball one time in the end zone. A good call by Gary Trample. Good coverage, though, by Torrey James. Denied the Spartans in the end zone. You have to take a shot at the end zone one time. You know there's five seconds left. you got a chance to come back with the field goal. And Gary did a nice job of getting the ball down into the end zone to take a shot at the touchdown. And LSU will use their final timeout to try to ice Chris Gardner, the place kicker. Gardner, 11 of 15 field goals on the year. This one will be a 37-yarder. They will we spot the, the ball at the 27-yard line. The immediately. Will the x-ray tech please report to the x-ray Jerry DiNardo, and he has to be awfully proud of the efforts of his offensive team in the first half, and particularly this guy right here. Incredible efforts by Falk, Kevin Falk, this 51-yard 50 run, tied an Independence Bowl record, and that was the third score in about two minutes and 15 seconds early in the second quarter. Yeah, they had three touchdowns in about two minutes and a half here as we started off the second quarter. So we are standing at 21 apiece. 42 points have been scored here in the first half, and we have a shootout in Shreveport. Gardner is 3 of 5 from 30 to 39 yards this year. This is a 37-yard attempt. They're trying to put the Spartans up by 3. Kick is up, and it is good. So with one second remaining here in the first half, Michigan State will take a three-point lead on a 37-yard field goal by sophomore Chris Gardner out of Plantation, Florida. Chris Gardner does a nice job of getting the ball in the air with a lot of height. Several of those LSU 6'5", 6'6", guys jumping at it, but he got the ball up in a hurry and right on target. And I hate to bring this up, but remember, they got one player down on the field there with a second to play in the first half. Looks to be Greg Hill, the strong safety, and the nickelback. If they attend to him. I hate to, when I start to say, I hate to bring this up, Coach, but with a second to go in the first half, and someone's going to kick off to someone. I think it's safe to say, Jerry, this ball's not going to be kicked very far, and it's not going to get off the ground. You're going to have to force one of those front guys to, to Well, cover. I'll tell you what, if you... Uh, if you would kick this one deep to uh, Eddie Kennison, I'd almost think you'd want to head that guy for the bus. Because uh, Kennison, uh, Kennison can absolutely turn it up. 
So I would expect a pooch kick here as they are able to help Greg Hill off the field. He gets up and walks off under his own power. And there is Kennison trying to ignite this crowd of partisan LSU fans. A sellout here in Shreveport. And what a first half they have seen. 45 points have been scored by these two football teams representing two of the premier conferences in America, the Big Ten and the SEC. And that's the onside or pooch kick we expected, and that will run out the clock here in the first half. At the end of one half here, we have 45-point scores. Michigan State leads LSU 24-21. And, Mike, what has been a shootout here in Shreveport? Yeah, Dr. Jerry and Bill Lewis, a catcher breath, wild first half there. We'll have an interesting halftime for you here. We will have highlights of the Sun Bowl, baseball news, and we'll talk more about the Fiesta Bowl, which is four days away, and special teams. You've seen what a factor special teams can be in a bowl game. We'll talk about special teams in Nebraska and Florida when Craig and Lee join me at the half of the Independence Bowl. Our score from Shreveport, Michigan State 24, LSU 21. Don't go away. Eric Randall scrambles out of trouble 
Now you should never throw the ball across the field, right? Well, maybe this time it'll be okay. Melvin Williams comes down with it, and he does the rest. Turns it on and breaks free. 68 yards for the touchdown, and the Jags are up 7-0. To the fourth, A&M playing catch-up, down 30-11. Mario Allen hooks up with Robert Wilson. 66 yards for the touch. The Rattlers would cut the lead to 30-25. Allen has time for one last drive, a minute and a half remaining. Rod Deemer gets his second interception of the game. Southern runs the clock out and hangs on. 30 to 25. Southern wins its second Heritage Bowl in the last three years. The Jaguars finished the season 11 and 1, preserving their number one ranking in the Sheridan Poll for historically black colleges. This marked quarterback Eric Randall's 43rd straight start, dating back to the fourth game of his freshman season. He was 16 of 25 for 190 yards and two TDs today. To college hoops, the Hoosier Classic at Bloomington, Appalachian State in Indiana. Bobby Knight asking his team for defense, and they respond. Andre Patterson, the emphatic block. The Hoosiers on O, Neil Reed, the baseline J, and the Hoosiers are up early. Mountaineers, though, coming back. Junior Braswell, the steal, and at the other end, the big-time jam. A little later in the half. The other end, the miss tipped in by Richard Mandeville. And Indiana has the lead. IU 26-0 all-time in the Hoosier Classic, right now still in the first half. And at the Rainbow Classic, the Illini trying to rebound from their first loss of the season. 82-81, the final in OT. The Illini have never lost to Hawaii. They're 4-0 and against them. More Rainbow Classic on the deuce tonight. At 10 Eastern, USC and top-ranked UMass go glass in the semifinals. The Minutemen going after their best start in 21 years. And at 12.30, Rhode Island runs with a red-hot Syracuse. The 13th-ranked Orangemen are 10-0. And one major league note, Ricky Henderson will make his first move to the National League after 16 years in the AL. Baseball's all-time stolen base leader has agreed to a two-year contract with the San Diego Padres. 37-year-old outfielder hit 300 and drove in 54 runs for Oakland last season. He also stole 32 bases. At halftime of the Independence Ball, they're lighting up the scoreboard. Michigan State leads 24-21 back to Mike and Company in Tempe after the break. When does a car feel good? When things are easy to reach. So we built a cabin simulator that varies the location of almost everything the driver uses to drive the car. We moved the parts in and out and up and down. It wasn't until everyone was comfortable that we could relax. Dodge Stratus. It's full of answers. Now get 1.9% financing, 500 cash savings, or a low lease rate. The perfect gene for your 10-year-old son. And your 10-year-old husband. Wrangler. Real, comfortable jeans. Pine Lake. Three friends. Three pair of Wrangler jeans. Everybody's comfortable. Even the fish. Wrangler. Real, comfortable jeans. as old as the wheel. Man seeks rental cars that are not only nice, but of course nearby. That's why Thrifty made them so handy. With car rentals right at the airport or right in the neighborhood. Look for the Thrifty location nearest you. And don't forget to use your Montgomery Ward credit card at Montgomery Ward Car Rental at all Thrifty locations. Your neighborhood Thrifty Car Rental. Historically known for low rates. This halftime report is presented by the new Dodge. We're thinking ahead. Our headquarters in Tempe is right in between the stadium and the Tostitos football fiesta going on on East 5th Street. Stadium place that leads up to Sun Devil Stadium, the site for the national championship game. Craig and Lee will join me momentarily. We're four days away from Florida, Nebraska. One and two going head-to-head. -head. Florida practice delayed 90 minutes today because the Fiesta Bowl luncheon ran a little late. Nebraska did practice before the luncheon. They do have injury news. Mike Minter, their talented DB, missed his second straight practice with a bruised knee. 
Now, special teams are always a factor in football games, and special teams is not just place kicking. All right, but for a field goal, Nebraska could be going for a national championship three-peat here this week. We mentioned special teams. You've seen the returns in our game. It's also the coverage teams that are very important. Florida's got a great cover man in Sam McCorkle. Led this team in special teams tackles the last couple of years. We asked McCorkle during, the, during this week, who does he look up to? When I was young, I always looked up to Bill Bates, you know, you know, just my, you know, as my hero, you know, you know, watching him on TV. And then you have the Steve Taskers. I mean, guys, that are, you know, Steve Tasker isn't a large man at all, but obviously you can tell he's a smart player out there, you know, and he puts himself in a position to make the play. But also, you know, he's, he's, you know, on the wild side too. But Bill Bates is the same way, you know, and just takes it, you know, takes special teams serious because he knows, you know, he helps the team out. And you know, I think these days in football, you know, special teams has become a big part of the game. Special teams always has a catalyst. Maybe it's McCorkle on field. What about off the field catalyst lead for the Florida special teams? Well, Mike, uh, their special team coach at Florida is Ron Zook. And I tell you what, he's done a great job of instilling enthusiasm in his team. In fact, some of the coaches and players think the guy's crazy. He's so wild. Now, that, I tell you what, Florida has blocked seven kicks this year, including this punt. And their special teams have this special train <laughs> choo-choo stand. Look, are these guys loose or what? I mean, you think they're going to play for the Florida State game. All right. I'll tell you what, Craig. They've got a great special teams. And I'll tell you, I'll make a prediction right now. Florida will block one kick against Nebraska in the championship game. I'll predict this. Two things. One, no, they will not block one. And right. the other is if you'd have participated in that dance, you'd have broke your hip. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what? Both teams have a, a lot of depth throughout their roster, which means you're going to have good special teams. As for Nebraska and their kicking game, if you have a true freshman, you usually worry about your place kicker and your field goals. Chris Brown is a true freshman who is unbelievable. This is a 47-yarder against Michigan State, the longest of his career this year, his only time in the career. You've got to consider this guy set a school record for field goal percentage, 81% of them. A school record for points, 97 points. He's an athlete. Two state titles in the state of Texas he led his team to. He was a quarterback. So in a pressure situation, he's been there, he's been a leader before, he will not falter. The rest of Nebraska's special teams has always been good. From a place-kicking only standpoint, for the first time in a while, we can say Nebraska's the stronger team going into a bowl game. We couldn't say that before. As we continue here from Tempe, we'll have more on halftime, a little bit more on this game later on. But next we're going to talk about the game going also on on the West Coast. The Rose Bowl and the man in the limelight, Gary Barnett. That's coming up as we continue on the New Dogs Halftime Report. would be for that 49 team 
to go to Pasadena and cheer for another Northwestern team at the Rose Bowl game. That was 1949. Bob Voigt was the coach of the Northwestern team that went to the Rose Bowl. Undoubtedly not the fanfare and the big atmosphere surrounding that Northwestern team as surrounds the team that's going to play Southern Cal later this week. That includes the limelight on the head coach. For more on him, here's Mark Schwartz. Mike, I'm with the unanimous coach of the year in college football, Gary Barnett at Northwestern. Gary, I want you to toot your own horn just briefly. Given the situation at Northwestern, the historic futility, from your perspective, what is the most important thing that you brought to this team to take them to this point? I don't think we paid any attention to the futile past. Uh, I mean, I think that's as much as anything, is that we came in in January 92, and we started in January 92 to build this, and we paid very little of any attention to the baggage that had gone on before. I mean, it's, it's really plain and simple. How do you get kids that have always lost to believe? Well, these kids hadn't always lost. Uh, the program had lost, but these kids hadn't lost, and, and they had to change their identity and uh, take on the identity of, uh, of what a winner does, and that's what they did. We just... It, it just took time, and it took uh, trust, and as much as anything, that's that's really what it was. Of course, this is Los Angeles. He's already done a fast food commercial. Now you're on Leno tonight? <laughs> yeah, I'm on Leno tonight. I'm going to find out how he uh, uh, beat out uh, Letterman. Let's find out what his secret was. All right, and Gary Barnett's going to be accompanied by the entire Wildcat roster, Mike. Back to you. Didn't know Jay had a couch to accompany that's the right. entire roster. I know it's a new set for Jay, but we'll be uh, watching with interest for <laughs> in that tonight. Gary Barnett has said, you know, he wants to stay at Northwestern. What, what advice would you give him? You're the coach among us. Well, Mike, you know, I'm coaching the Big Ten at Indiana for 10 years, and I watched the Rose Bowl situation a lot. I want to give him some advice, please. It's tough enough to go to the Rose Bowl once. They were lucky. They probably will never go again in his lifetime. So get a long contract, Gary. <laughs> 10 or 12 years exactly, because I tell you what, you know what? Those teams go once. It's hard to go back because everybody else is shooting at you. You're negotiating for Steve Spurrier now. 900,000. Now Gary Barnett from Gary Barnett. How much per year? 10%. Oh, yeah, I got what a deal you got going. <laughs> hey, all of the distractions taking place. People out there wondering if Northwestern will be focused. They've been out at Disney World doing all those great things. But let me tell you what happens as a player and as a team. The first two days you get out there, everybody's drinking heavily, whether that be soda pop or the alcoholic beverages. But the last three or four days before you get into that football game, you lock your room, you go to bed, you think about football. It's a big-time game, big-time bowl. A lot of time we see mismatches going into games. We wonder, how did the score end up like that? Maybe it's because the teams focused down the last two days before a game. And Texas A&M won their bowl game without Leela McElroy last night. We'll have news on McElroy as we continue at the half of a great football game thus far. LSU, Michigan State, special teams all over the place, including Eddie Kennison's touchdown, helping the Tigers stay within three. Let's look at the Magnum Power Sales event one word at a time. Magnum, as in Magnum Engines, as in Dodge Ram, ranked most appealing pickup by J.D. Power & Associates. Power, overall the most powerful line of truck engines on the planet. Sales, save on 5.2 and 5.9 liter V8s, up to $670, or $500 on Cummins Diesel. And event, it's the first time America's hottest pickups have ever been on sale like this. At America's Truck Stop, the new Dodge. How light is the new Featherlight gas trimmer from Weed Eater? Well, at over 20% less than the nearest competition, it's the world's lightest. How easy to start is the new Weed Eater Featherlight gas trimmer? Well, it doesn't take a lot of pull to get all the power you'll ever need. How well does the new Weed Eater Featherlight trim grass? The world's lightest gas power trimmer performs like a heavyweight.
preview of K-State and Colorado State, and here is Adrian Karsten. Well, Mike, the turnaround for the two teams in tonight's season ender is complete. Consider this. The Kansas State Wildcats are one of only five teams in Division I that have won nine games each of the last three seasons. And look at the other four teams. Two are playing for the national title. You can see the other major bowl representation. Colorado State head coach Sonny Lubick says playing here two years in a row still feels like Christmas morning, but there's one gift left still unopened. See, playing here is one thing, he says, but winning here is something else. For the Ram fans, it's not so much celebration anymore. No, now it's expectation. After going 9-2, and two, they feel they deserve to win this one. But Lubick has his concerns. It comes down to a lack of depth on defense. Can we slow them down? Can we keep them off the, off the board? And we'll have to play probably better than any time we did this year because we know that K-State has a great defense and where no one this year has taken the ball and gone up and down the field against them. And so we, we're going to have to keep it close on our side of the ball defensively. Great defense. Coach, Kansas State is college football's stingiest defense. No other unit gives up fewer yards. But remember, the Rams are from the whack, and they like to open it up. They're going to score a lot of points. Also, tonight marks the first time this season that the Wildcats have played on natural grass. The turf is soft. The grass is long. They may not be ready for this. We'll see if the Rams can use that to their advantage when I join Brad Nessler and Gary Danielson from the field as we kick off the 1995 Plymouth Holiday Bowl at 9 Eastern. Mike? AK, we'll see you after uh, our game going on right now. Lee, if the fans can take their eyes off of Adrian's smiley face. <laughs> Tis the season to remember our friends. Your friends and neighbors at Louisiana National Security Bank want to wish you and your loved ones a very wonderful holiday season and all the best throughout the coming year. Security Bank, member FDIC, an equal housing lend. You've got to drive it home. Diamond Motors Nissan delivers value. Value's why we've got the best-selling compact truck in Baton Rouge. And our affordable luxury sedan, the Nissan Altima, retains its value better than Mercedes, Lexus, and BMW. So for the best selection of new Nissan cars, trucks, and vans with lasting value and huge discounts, it's definitely Diamond. Florida Boulevard between Sherwood and Flannery. back and apologize for our brief interruption. We were about to say, Lee, yes. one brief note on our game coming up between Kansas State and Colorado State in the Holiday Bowl. Who should we look for? Kansas State's got a wide receiver, Kevin Lockett. The staff told me, watch him deep early against Colorado State's blitzes. We promised news on Leland McElroy, K-State, part of the Big 12 next year, Texas A&M, part of the Big 12. Word that Leland McElroy has said today, that's it, I'm going to go to the NFL. Your thoughts, Craig? I, I, you know, first of all, emotionally, physically, the guy's ready to play in the National Football League. Talent level-wise, he's ready to go. As a running back, I never advise against it because he's ready to go. There's only so many knocks that he can take. He will pursue and finish his education. He's that kind of, kind of person, but the guy's a hoss. He can play in the NFL today. As we've seen with players like Curtis Martin, young running backs are the players that can make a distinct first-year impact yes. in the NFL. All right, so we'll keep you updated on that. We've got another second half to go here at the Independence Bowl. Michigan State, LSU. Let's go back to Shreveport, Dr. Jerry Punch. Jerry? Thank you, Michael. Back in Shreveport, Louisiana. What a first half these fans have enjoyed here is our halftime score, 45-41, uh, 45-42. Michigan State, incredible first half. I think even their coach, Stanger, had to be a little bit surprised. They thought it would be a defensive struggle. They certainly did. What we saw, Jerry, was the effect of the suddenness and the excitement of special teams plays. Two outstanding kickoff returns. The big surprise to me in the first half is the number of points that Michigan State put up on the board. 24 points in their last four games. They had given up just 26 points. Over 550 yards of total offense in the first half. A couple of turnovers each. Uh, time of possession in favor of Michigan State. As is the scoreboard by three points. 24-21 here at halftime. Michigan State over LSU. Eddie Kennison, who took one back in the second quarter, 92 yards. Chris Gardner's at the tee it up in the second half. Glad to have you with us, Bill Lewis and Jerry Price. Second half of the Polar Winger Independence Bowl. Kennison from his own three-yard line. Up over the 15, 20, has an opening, and he is brought down at the 25-yard line by Dan Hackett-Brett. Take a look at some of the highlights here in the first half, and there were quite a few of them. 
first one we're going to see is the 92-yard kickoff return by Eddie Kennison. The suddenness we talked about, the excitement is all here as he saw daylight, used his speed to go 92 yards for the LSU touchdown. Not to be outdone was Derek Mason. On the ensuing kickoff, Mason takes it right on the goal line, actually a yard deep in the end zone, sees daylight up the middle, makes the kicker miss in the middle of the field, and then uses his speed to go all the way. In and out of the hands of David LaFleur, first play of the second half for LSU. Tyler faked a handoff to Falk, had LaFleur back in the flat on the back side, but penalty flags have flown. And the LSU players are pointing toward Michigan State. Got a personal foul against Michigan State. Apparently a roughing the passer call against uh, on Herb Tyler, the freshman quarterback for LSU, and they will, they will mark off some serious yardage. Personal foul, roughing the passer. We'll have an opportunity First to foul. see right at the end of the play, number 94, not only did he come in and hit him late, but he speared him with the crown of the head gear, number 94. Jabbar Freaks with the, the late hit and the 15-yard penalty. Threats who led the team with 11 tackles for a loss in 1995. Tied for second on the team with five sacks. A little late, that'll cost them 15 yards. First possession of the second half, 24-21. Michigan State at halftime. And once again, the Yellow Hankies come out. And Tyler looking deep, wide open is Kennison down on about the 12-yard line. And he will make the catch. Ray Hill, the right cornerback, 47 yards, but the penalty flags are laying back up field. Open downfield was Eddie Kennison had about three yards over the defender Ray Hill, the sophomore from Detroit. And Herb Tyler laid it out there beautifully. Jerry, the officials are sorting out the penalties. We've got two, one at the snap of the ball, and then there was also a dead ball foul involving two players got in a little mix-up after the catch and tackle downfield. I'm sure our big eight crew will straighten it out, and referee Terry Turlington will tell us. Uh, Michigan State and a personal foul Michigan State so both penalties against the Spartans and the play will stand we're going to get a look at the the fine job by Herb Tyler as Eddie Kennison number two got behind number 10 Ray Hill the personal foul occurred back up in the middle of the field beyond that play we saw 96 come in and hit on the quarterback after the ball, number 96, Chris Smith. And Kennison will get a breather on the sidelines. And that'll make it first and goal for LSU here in the opening possession of the second half. Line of scrimmage, the Michigan State five-yard line. Spartans up by three, the pitch to fall, three, two, one, touchdown. first half where both teams scored on the opening possession. LSU takes it in the opening possession here in the second half and marches the length of the field to score. Falk over from five yards away. Andre LaFleur on for the extra point. The kick is up and good. Herb Tyler almost fell down coming out of the center quarterback exchange, but he managed to get the ball to Falk. And he got in behind big 302-pound Anthony McFarland for the touchdown. We'll see it here from the end zone. Watch 94 up in front, lead the way up into the hole, finish off the linebacker, and allow Falk to get into the end zone. What happened during halftime is everybody in this stadium simply caught their breath from the excitement of the first half. And as the second half was about to begin, they gave an extra tug to their seat belts and LSU didn't disappoint them in their first series. My goodness, uh, less than a minute gone in the second half, and we've got seven more on the board. This time the Tigers go back up on top. 
the final run, four yards away by Kevin Falk. Wade Ritchie on to kick it off. Wade Ritchie to kick off for LSU. He was a USA Today High School All-American kicker a couple of years ago. Has a tremendously strong leg. He is the place kicker of the future for the Tigers. But they're going to the guy who's very dangerous, and they're not going to him at all. No, no way. They're kicking it to the up man. And he is smothered about the 38-yard line. That's a linebacker, Ledyard. And that's where Michigan State will take over possession. Kickoff returned by number 53, Courtney Ledyard. I saw the maintenance man running downstairs a moment ago to grab a whole box of light bulbs. They're going to need it for that scoreboard. We keep lighting it up here. They 28-24. Now, the Independence Bowl record here, the Poland Wheater Independence Bowl record, was set back in 1992. Wake Forest and Oregon, a combined 74 points, with Wake Forest holding on for a 39-35 victory. And I think we have a shot at breaking that tonight. Back to pass, the completion upfield. The tight end, Josh Kerr, banks to Kerr. For a very small gain, about a yard and a half. Now they're saying the ball was the pass was not completed. Kerr did not hang on. Apparently he trapped the football and it came loose on the ground, so that'll bring up a second and ten. Sellout crowd here in Shreveport, Louisiana, 20th anniversary of the Polar Wind Eater Independence Bowl. Glad to have you with us, Bill Lewis, and your truly Terry Punch, bringing you exciting college football action on ESPN. So we've got another one coming your way later tonight from San Diego. Banks back to pass, has a receiver, Mohammed, at the 50-yard line. And Moussa Mohammed, that's the tandem that opened the scoring here in this football game if you missed the first half. He missed a lot of points. Second play from scrimmage, Banks to Muhammad, 78 yards, and that's how it all started. Michigan up 7-0, and it's been just Katie bar the door since. Tony Banks comes right back out after a 200-yard-plus first half, and he's 2-for-2 two two and, and throwing the hard ball once again. Tailback, Mark Renaud has no running room whatsoever. Gabe Northern there, the two-time All-SEC defensive end to make the stop for a loss of about two and a half, make it three yards behind the line of scrimmage. Jerry, one of the disadvantages of not having you down on the sideline is that uh, we don't uh, have our injury report, and now I see Scott Green going onto the field. He left the game late in the second quarter with what appeared to be a possible shoulder injury. He did not come out and play the first two plays, but he's now on the field, so apparently he's able to play. Scott Green, the two-time MVP for Michigan State, pass overthrown, intended for Derek Mason up around the 35-yard line. Two programs that are trying to turn it around after a number of years of struggles. LSU's Tiger fans have waited six years to get the postseason play. Their last bowl game back on January 1 of, 80, of 89. First winning season in six years. Michigan State fans have not had a winning season since 1990. Although they played the bowl game, ended up with a 6-6 six six record back in 93, losing to Louisville in the Liberty Bowl. Six lead changes in this football game. Sounds like a stock car race. Back to pass once again, and he can't hang on. Josh Kerr, the second time in this drive, Kerr unable to hang on. Couldn't get a handle on it. That'll bring up a punting situation. LSU came with the blitz, forcing Tony Banks to throw the ball to his short receiver. He simply did not have time to hold on to the ball and let his deep receivers work downfield. Chris Solani back to punt. Our Michigan State averaging 39.6, 36.9 yards for the season. A high kick down to Kennison. No fair catch at his own 10-yard line, and he is smacked immediately, and that's where they'll call it down. Lucid Muhammad, the wide receiver, making the stop. 40-yard punt. Well, we're joined in the booth by a man who's got to be smiling tonight, John Waters, the CEO of Polo Weed Eater. And, John, you guys have got to be so excited about the relationship here with this bowl game. Absolutely.
absolutely great. It's great for the community. It's great for everything. Two great teams, a great game. This relationship over a couple of years ago, people said this is going to grow and grow and grow, but I don't think anyone perceived that it would get this big this quick. Uh, bringing an LSU in and bringing the top Michigan State team just really just overwhelmed everything. It was beyond our expectations. The atmosphere here tonight, sellout crowd here at Shreveport. Uh, incredible, over 50,000 here. And the atmosphere talking about bringing LSU, bringing Michigan State in. The tie-in that they announced early this year with the SEC is going to guarantee a lot of excitement with the host team. Yeah, especially this part of the country. They just big to SEC tie-ins and it's, it's kind of guarantee us a good early sellout early, early in the next year, the next couple of years. I want to compliment the field out here looks great. I mean, they've taken those weed eaters and done a wonderful job. They edged it perfectly, and there's not a... There's not a uh, we walked early. There's not a weed down there anywhere. We don't allow them. We, we took care of that. And there's a few signs around to remind you which company is sponsoring this thing. Okay, thank John. You. Hey, thanks for joining thank us. You congratulations much. on a great relationship yeah, here with the Independence Bowl. And off to the running back, Falk. John Waters and that the folks from Poland have got to be awful excited, Coach, because of their relationship not only with the bowl, but the whole community here involved in Shreveport, uh, supporting the atmosphere, the excitement of these teams. Had a big Mardi Gras here last night for both ball clubs and, and uh, sellout crowd here. Jerry, it's so very obvious from the time you hit town that the entire community and the surrounding communities uh, are involved. And we'll talk a little bit about what Jerry Denaro did with his LSU football team after this play. Down and Salem one upfield double coverage on Shedrick Wilson, and he was uh, covered inside and outside for the incompletion to bring up a punt. Jerry, one of the things that was so interesting when Jerry Donardo brought his team earlier this week to Shreveport, all of his practices were held at local high schools, a different high school each day, and he opened up every one of his practices to all of the LSU fans. And it was something that I had never heard uh, happen. They had all kind of excitement. Mark King, the big senior offensive guard, put it this way when we were talking to him. He said, everybody was at their practice except the LSU marching band. Those were the only folks that weren't there. But it was a tremendous gesture on the part of Coach Bernardo to the people that support LSU, the university, and LSU, the football program. They had the stands full at those high schools here in Shreveport. They practiced the last couple of days at Bird High School. And remember, this is a school that had 27,000 fans show up for their spring game. They follow their football team. Back with more from Shreveport in just a moment. Stay with us. The Riverfront in downtown Shreveport. Live music. Special events. Family activities. Museums. Food. Be a part of the excitement. The Riverfront in downtown Shreveport with entertainment, great food, and family fun daily. It'll put you smack dab in the middle of fun. How do you amaze an amazing mouth? Well, why not start with Long John Silver's Flaky Fish? The batter dip twist no mouth can resist. Pick up our crunchy golden shrimp or tender all white chicken. <laughs> Famous batter dip fish, chicken, and shrimp. Three delicious ways to amaze your mouth. Only at Long John Silver's. Oh, yes. It's the amazing 25-cent shrimp sale. Golden batter dip shrimp, now just a quarter each. No limit. It's a car that, when seen, leaves an impression. When driven, creates a stir. When owned, lives up to its promise. And when judged, wins award after award after award after award. The new Ford Taurus, the success story that never ends. Making the dream come true. Back in Shreveport, Louisiana, that's the junction to Interstate 49, just two miles from the stadium here at Independence Stadium. And you jump on 49 and head south about four hours, and you're in Baton Rouge, the home of the LSU Tigers. And folks, they have come here early in the week, the LSU fans, as have the Michigan State fans, to enjoy the great atmosphere and the weather of Shreveport. Michigan State on offense, it's time to give to the tailback, Mark Renaud, for a gain of a couple. The 20th Annual Poland Wheat Eater Independence Bowl is brought to you by the all-new Ford Taurus, a look you've never seen from a name you know well. Incredible atmosphere here in Shreveport, first half. If you join us 
slate. All you missed was 45 points and 556 yards of total offense. In the second half, we're sort of seeing some of the same. LSU has already scored once, and Michigan State on offense. Completion to Mohammed. He's got some blockers, but an outstanding effort by Corey James out of the left cornerback position to fight through the blockers and make the tackle. Outstanding open field tackle by Torrey James, and he did that because he kept on his feet. He stayed up. He took the receiver on high, did a nice job of getting him on the ground, and then he got some help from Pat Rogers, his outside linebacker. Great pursuit to the football. Officials talking it over on the field. Had a hot start here in the first quarter tonight. 10 of 17, passing for 191 yards and a touchdown. Has slowed down since then. He is 3 of 11 for 37 yards. Talking about Tony Banks, a senior quarterback for Michigan State. Across the line of scrimmage, therefore no foul. And they will wave off the flag. Michigan State to get Tony Banks back in the football game. He is the key to their offensive success. As we talked with Coach Saban, he felt like they had to play well at the quarterback position in that order to win this game. Three wide receivers in, shotgun formation, LSU faking the blitz, and the flags come. Looks like one of the LSU linebackers may have stepped into the neutral zone. We'll see what they call. Probably going to cost the Tigers five yards on a third and seven situation. Dead ball, ball start on the offense, third down. And instead, they're going to march five off against Michigan State on the dead ball foul. So that man has to throw it for five more yards. Tony Banks brings up a third and 12, less than 10 minutes remaining. Nick Saban's team trailing by four points after leading at halftime, 24-21. Three wide receivers, Mason, Muhammad, and Napoleon Outlaw. Top of your screen. Shotgun formation by Banks. Looks downfield, getting rushed, and he will be smothered by Greg Hill and a host of Tigers, and they have taken possession of the ball. Gabe Northern picks up the football and will ramble down and score for LSU. Oh, my. What a turnaround. Northern two-time All-SEC defensive end is exhausted. Once again, we see the effects of the LSU pressure. This time they brought their linebackers as well as their safety, number 25, Greg Hill. We see Hill getting the first part of the sack. We see Gabe Northern coming from the back, stripping the ball loose. The ball was never down. Northern's knees never touched the ground. He alertly scooped it up and ran it into the score. Extra point is good on the 37-yard fumble return by Northern, and suddenly LSU is up by 11, 35, 24, with 9 minutes, 20 seconds remaining here in the third quarter. We'll be back. There are all kinds of reasons we created Ford Windstar with over 40 standard safety features like dual airbags and anti-lock brakes. Reasons it has the government's highest front crash test rating and offers a more powerful V6 engine than any other minivan. We did all this for a lot of different reasons and some identical ones. Introducing the 1996 Ford Windstar, created for the most important people in the world. Where would you be without Weed Eater? The same affordable quality that's made us a household name for the past 20 years goes into every Weed Eater gas and electric blower and blower vac. Fine looking dog you got there, Jack. Name's Poolan, after my trusty chainsaw. That's Poland. Oh, and to think he's been answering to the wrong name for all these years. Anybody know McDonald's Big Mac song? To all meat fans, vegetables, lettuce, 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 pickles, onions, and a sesame seed bun. Oh, fun! To all meat fans, vegetables, lettuce, 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 lettuce,
beef cheesies? Yeah. Cheesy beefies? You want beef pie, pretzels on this? Cheese pickles, onions on a sesame seed. I can do anything. Why can't I do this? Have you had your Mac today? Back in Shreveport, there's a look at Gabe Northern, the senior from Baton Rouge. Two-time All-SEC selection, 37-yard scamper after he strips the ball from Tony Banks. Wade Ritchie kicks a low-line drive, and they hand it off back there to Mason. And Mason comes to the near sideline, and no, he will not get away this time as he is brought down about the 26-yard line, a 12-yard return. Let's go back and take a look at the, the big play here and the pressure of the LSU secondary. And as we talked to Nick Saban yesterday, he was concerned about Michigan State's ability to block the LSU blitz long enough for his receivers to work open downfield. Obviously, that time the coverage held up long enough for the pressure to get to him. And then we've got the big turnover and run back by Gabe Northern for the LSU touchdown. They talked about needing to be able to throw the ball effectively and open up the running game, and they did do that in the first half. They have not done it here in the third quarter. And now Banks will scramble other side, tells Mohammed to go downfield, and he has him open, but the ball almost picked off. An alert play by Clarence Linton coming over his free safety spot to help on the coverage of Moose and Mohammed. Mohammed had turned and gotten behind the defender, and the ball was just overthrown. We're going to get a chance to look at Muhammad on the isolation, and as he turned up, he had an opening right there, and the ball was just slightly overthrown, giving Clarence Lenton time to come over top from his free safety position. Tony Banks doing a nice job to reverse his field, had plenty of time to get the ball off to the offensive line, able to hold out the LSU rush. Second and ten. Michigan State's offense sputtering here in the third quarter. They give it to the fullback, Green, and he will go nowhere. In fact, will probably lose a yard. Alan Stansberry, leading tackler on the Tiger defense there to make the stop. What is important here, Jerry, is that the Michigan State offense keeps their poise. They've had a struggle through this part of the third quarter, but there's a lot of time left. It's been a wide-open football game. Keep your composure. Gary Tranquil, the offense coordinator now, has got to be selective, find some things that can be effective for his Michigan State offense. Third and 11. In their own territory, Banks has the receiver ball was tipped and intercepted at Stansberry, and he will scramper down to the 15-yard line. And the turnovers keep piling up for the Spartans. Again, Jerry, the, the pressure of the LSU defensive front, defensive end number seven, James Gilliard, we're going to see him comes in. He tipped the ball in the air, allowing Stansbury to come over and make the interception. Right there, that's number seven. Gilliard with his hand up, he tipped it. Here comes Stansbury breaking on the ball. He does a nice job of running with it. Ran through Mark Renard and brought it down to the 14-yard line. Fourth turnover tonight for Michigan State. They try the flanker around. The ball gets away, and it looks like it's been recovered. They were trying to pitch the ball to Eddie Kennison coming around. Recovered for a loss by Kendall Cleveland, the redshirt freshman tailback. Four turnovers. That's the story for Michigan State. Three fumbles and an interception. And they have struggled offensively here in the third quarter. But for the Michigan State fans who have followed this Spartan team all year long, they understand that in five of the six games they've won this year, they face deficits in the second half. And this team certainly understands what it's like to be behind. And they have fought their way back and won five times after trailing in the second half. Pass upfield. Cannot connect with Kennison. Looked like a miscommunication, Jerry, between the quarterback and receiver. The receiver came down, breaking to the inside. Herb Tyler expecting the outside break through the ball outside and then harmlessly hit the ground. This is a critical series for the Michigan State defense. They've got to respond now to the challenge of the turnover 
and deny LSU points on the scoreboard. Third and 23 for the Tigers. Line of scrimmage, the Michigan State 27-yard line. Here is Tyler looking for the end zone. Wide open is Kennison, and they will give him six. Beautiful pass, and that had to be a busted coverage back here because Eddie Kennison had five yards on Demetrius Martin, the left cornerback. Very obviously, Jerry, a, a busting coverage. The corner expected to have help from the safety deep behind him. When he saw that there was no help back there, he turned in a panic and tried to catch Eddie Kennison in the corner of the end zone. Oh, and Nick Saban, who prides himself on great defense, pacing the sideline, and that man right there, 27-yard reception, Eddie Kennison. And now LaFleur for the extra point. It is good. And it is 42-24 LSU. We're going to see the touchdown again. Number 14, Tyler, finds Kennison wide open. Number 21, Demetrius Martin was the corner, expecting to have some help from his safety, number six, Sori Canoe. Canoe wasn't there. You don't know which player was at fault, but obviously a big mistake in the Michigan State secondary. One of the things that Nick Saban feared yesterday when we talked to him was LSU's big playability, and that certainly has come and haunted him here in the third quarter. We told you, Kennison was a four-time track All-American. Not only did he catch the pass for 27 yards and score, but he took two steps and leaped the fence four and a half feet high with one step. Now that's talent. Young man, four receptions, 98 yards, an average of 24 and a half yards and a touchdown. The junior from Lake Charles, Louisiana. Voted most outstanding offensive player by the LSU coaches this year, and now you're seeing why. Wade Ritchie kicks it off. And the short man will bring it up over the 30-35 yard line. And of course, coming up after our coverage, we're going to go out to San Diego to Jack Murphy Stadium, the Plymouth Holiday Bowl. Kansas State taking on Colorado State. And what a good one that should be. Head break, Kansas State, 9 2, Colorado State, 8 and 3. 9 o'clock Eastern Time. Brad Nesser, Gary Danielson, and Adrian Carson out at Jack Murphy Stadium. Glad to have you with us here. Bill Lewis, along with yours truly, Jerry Pines, bringing you the 20th Annual Poland Leader Independence Bowl here in the third quarter. It is 42-24 LSU. After a 24-21 halftime lead by Michigan State, they have been unable to move the football until now. That completion to Renaud, 40, inside the 40-yard line. Mark Renaud. That pass almost picked off. Michigan State in the second, in the third quarter are having back-to-back -back turnovers. And that's a look at the Michigan State sideline. They're over there going to regroup a little bit. They're not at all happy about what's happened in the third quarter. They're going to get their thoughts and minds together and get on that football field. This is a very, very proud and very intense football program.
receiver upfield, and Mason makes the reception down about the 37-yard line. Jerry, I certainly need to apologize to wide receiver Derek Mason because when the flag was thrown, it was thrown right at him in the secondary, and the official came in pointing to him, and I did not see that he continued on by him up into the area that Flozell Adams had been involved in the skirmish on the line of scrimmage. Looked like the back judge able to see upfield and saw Adams involved, and there's a look at Adams, who apparently has been ejected from this football game. Michigan State trying to get their offense on track here in the third quarter. They have scored no points in the second half, and behind, from behind again, Mason, or Banks, I should say, is smothered by James Gilliard, the left end. And it'll be LSU football. Incredible the turn of events here for Michigan State in the third quarter. Jerry, as we saw the ejection of number 76, Flozell Adams being ejected from the game. In professional football, when a player is ejected, he does have to leave the site. He has to leave the stadium. In college football, they are permitted to stay on the sideline, as we see Adams uh, doing in this case. Kendall Cleveland, the running back, carried the football, and he is gang-tackled by a host of Spartans led by Jabbar Threets, the right end. And temper is beginning to flare on the field. A lot of frustration, some tempers flaring on both sides of the ball, LSU and Michigan State. A lot of talking back and forth, and we've got an LSU player down. And Kendall Cleveland, who was driven back by a host of Michigan State players, he is the, the injured tiger. You see Cleveland up in the pile, underneath of a host of, of green jerseys. The ball came loose, but it came loose obviously after the whistle was blown. And I don't know, Jerry, if that's what caused the frustration on the part of Michigan State, but that clearly was not a fumble. The whistle had blown long before that ball came loose. We saw number 23, Yakini Allen, come off the field tremendously upset. And it's important here that the Michigan State defense stay together and play hard. They've got to get this game turned around. Their offense is struggling. On the defense. First down. When your offense struggles, it's important that that defense comes to life, picks them up. What they need is a three-down series, get off the field, get the ball back in the hands of the Michigan State offense. There's a look at Kendall Cleveland, able to get off the field, and now the coach is talking to uh, some of their defensive players that are trying to calm down. That's Akini Allen. First to 10 LSU now at the Michigan State 46-yard line. And there's Cleveland, redshirt freshman tailback. We had about five or 600 pounds fall on him when they finally made the tackle back there. Gang tackled back, personal foul penalty. And now the line of scrimmage is Michigan State territory. Here is Falk inside the 40-yard line, down to about the 39. And Chris Smith there to run out of the bounds. The ball carrier. But not until he gains about eight. Chris Smith, number 96, makes a stop. That play, Jerry, is a great example of what separates a good back from an outstanding back. That basically was a no-game play, but Falk kept working, breaking tackles, finding the soft spot, ends up with a seven- or eight-yard gain. Less than five minutes remaining here in the third quarter in Shreveport, and once again, Falk gets the handoff, and he will go nowhere. Gain of maybe a half a yard, if at that. That'll bring up a third and short. Reggie Garnett, leading tackler for Michigan State, the junior from Akron, Ohio, making his 34th consecutive start in the Spartan defense tonight. He is there to make the start. In fact, Garnett 
did not make the start tonight, so he won't get credit for 34 consecutive starts. That's exactly right. That's a pretty good streak that came to an end, and he did an outstanding job on that play of keeping tempo with his own dive play. His fault cut it back. He cut it right back with him from the middle linebacker position and put him in the hole. Third and three, back to pass, and the pass is complete to the tight end, LaFleur, 30, 25, 20, and he will be chased out of bounds inside the 15-yard line by Sori Canoe. 26-yard completion, Tyler to LaFleur. LaFleur has had 12 catches this season from the tight end position, but he's 6'7", he's 279 pounds, and he shows his strength running through the, the arms of Marvin Wright, number 18. Wright, remember, was the defensive back that had 102 tackles during the season. First and 10, 15-yard line, Falk given the handoff, and he is brought down behind the line of scrimmage, an outstanding effort by Reggie Garnett. Garnett breaking through to catch Falk for about a six-yard loss. loss Big series for the Michigan State defense. 16. They've got to find a way here to stop LSU or this thing could start to slip away from them. Reggie Garnett with back-to-back -back outstanding plays. Had a shoulder injury early in the year. Pushed his knee versus Iowa. Was the co-winner along with Ike Reese, the linebacker of the outstanding underclass defensive lineman. There's a look at Kevin Fox numbers on the evening. 181 yards. Averaging 12.9 a carry. Looking deep in the end zone once again and the pass is overthrown. Intended for Shedrick Wilson. And that fence there is a little bit difficult. Players having to leap that thing. Demetrius Martin also went over the fence. Now some of the fans and attendants trying to help some of the players get back in. Very unusual, Jerry, to have a fence that close to the field and then not have some type of padding uh, to protect the players because both of them got into it in a hurry. We're going to watch how quickly that fence comes up upon both of those players as they go through the end zone. Could be a very dangerous situation to run into that thing at full speed like those two players did. The shovel pass, and it'll be an incomplete pass intended for Kevin Falk. And that'll bring up fourth down. Jerry DiNardo trying to get his uh, field goal team on the field. Andre LaFleur coming out for what will probably be about a 38-yarder. He will kick the ball from after the 27-yard line. 38-yard field goal. His longest of the year, 51 against Mississippi State. Low line drive kick, and it is wide left. And kick is no good. Michigan State gets a reprieve. So with two minutes, 29 seconds remaining here in the third quarter, LSU 42, Michigan State 24. Back with more from Shreveport in just a moment. I remember my first hunt. It was a lot like this. My daughter, well, she's a lot like I was. A lot of things have changed in the world since my first hunt, but some things will never change. The crisp fall air. A good dog, the thrill of a first hunt, and the quality of a browning. Browning, the best there is. Come see John Rogers at Ace Hardware in White Castle. Credit Merchandise Rent to Own in Plaquemine has the largest selection of furniture, appliances, and electronics in the area. At Credit Merchandise Rent to Own, we're committed to quality, service, and excellence. We'd like to take this opportunity to say thank you and Merry Christmas to all our fine customers who support us. We deeply appreciate your business and hope you may have a happy new year. Merry Christmas! During the month of December, you can rent to own this 19-inch TV with remote and forehead VCR for only $14.75 per week at Credit Merchandise. If you want to be a big and strong athlete, you have to be a big and strong Steroids just don't 
get it done. If you or someone you know needs help or information concerning drug abuse, call this toll-free number, 1-800-662-HELP. This message provided by the NCAA. Back in Shreveport, look at the Golden Girls. They are famous in Baton Rouge and around the southeast. Part of the Golden Band from Tigerland. Here to support the LSU folks, Tony Banks. Take a look at the first and second half. What a difference. Banks trying to get the Spartan offense on track, but it won't happen there. No chance whatsoever to get that one off. James Gilliard there. The senior from Shreveport, one of four players on LSU's team from right here in Shreveport. Jerry, down after down now in the second half, the LSU defense is simply challenging Michigan State. They're putting eight people on the line of scrimmage. They're mixing up different combinations of blitzes. This time they brought their two inside linebackers, and we saw number seven, James Gilliard, come off the corner and beat David Mudge, who is now playing in the spot that Flozell Adams vacated when he was thrown out of the game. Loss of 14, it'll bring up a second and 24, the draw play to Renaud. He gets an opening, 5-10, and finally Gilliard once again will bring down Renaud back up near the 20-yard line. Nice job by Mark Renaud, almost smothered in the backfield, able to dodge out of a couple of would-be tacklers. Gain about 12 yards. There's Bernard, 15 rushes, 70 yards, averaging 4.7, averaged 4.9 yards per carry on the season. Third and 12. Line of scrimmage, their own 19 yard line. Banks trying to scramble out. And once again, guess who? James Gilliard. Gillard was voted most improved player on the LSU defense in 1995, and now you know why. They're, they're relentless with their pass rushing. You're now starting to see the speed differential show up, Jerry, between the two football teams. The LSU defensive front is simply too quick for the big, strong Michigan State offensive line of scrimmage. Solani back to punt. LSU with five sacks this evening and a low wobbler up to about the 47, 48 yard line and that's where they'll blow it dead at the LSU 49 where the Tigers will take possession. Five seconds remaining here in the third quarter and the third quarter has belonged solely to LSU. At halftime, Michigan State led 24-21. They have not scored in the third quarter. And LSU has taking a 42 to 24-point lead. You look at Michigan State's season, the third quarter has been their weakest quarter all year long. They have scored just 49 points in the third quarter, and that's pretty evident here in what we've just seen. Great tackle on Herb Tyler by Jabbar Threets, and Threets is not at all relinquishing this one.
to witness an unparalleled sports spectacle, the Truckathlon. Yeah! And to compete, you have to have a Ford Ranger 4x4, because you'll need it switch on four-wheel drive for truck long jump. It's four-wheel anti-lock brakes for truck discus. And it's whopping four-liter V6 for truck hurdle. The Ford Ranger 4x4. You can't win without one. Next event, truck pole vault. Yes! Yeah, I took the high endurance challenge from Old Spice. Because I didn't really think it could work better than my old deodorant. But it does. If you don't think it's the best, call 1-800-PROVE-IT and they'll buy you a stick of yours. Now you got proof. Guaranteed.
seconds remaining here in this football game. LSU misses another shot and adding three to the scoreboard. It's 42-24, Tigers over the Spartans.
fur on the gas pump and the environment. Like this car with its 100% recyclable body. It's simply a reflection of our thinking. Ford, quality is job one.
p.m. It's number 18, Virginia, taking on Georgia in the Peach Bowl as Ray Goff coaches his last game as a Georgia Bulldog. Hey, what a class individual Ray Goff is. He certainly is, and he handled a, an extremely difficult situation with nothing but class here in the last five or six weeks. He's the kind of guy that you like to have your kids exposed to, so we're hoping that uh, when you're around him in the locker room or during the pregame that Ray will get a chance to coach some more down the road. A couple of yards on the option by Tyler. Reggie Garnett there to make the stop. Jerry, good things will happen to Ray Goff because there's a lot of administrators out there that, that observe that whole situation in Georgia and they know the manner in which Ray handled it. And I think he's the kind of guy that an awful lot of folks will want to have uh, in their program. I totally agree.
current scoring. The last three coming on a 48-yard field goal by Wade Ritchie, the sophomore from Pro, Louisiana. There's a young man you're going to hear a lot about over the next few years. Kevin Falk, true freshman. Field has a receiver downfield and will throw it to the near side. 
and that's Derek Mason. Hussein Muhammad has broken open down over the 30-yard line and was wide open, but Banks had already decided to tuck it in and toss it near side to Derek Mason. Tony's done a nice job the last two passes of stepping up into the middle of the pocket. The pressure's coming off the edge. He's stepping up away from that pressure, buying himself a couple extra seconds to find the open receiver. Receivers top of your screen, Mohammed and Outlaw, Mason, bottom of your screen, they will hand it off to the tailback Renaud, and he will get about four yards before Allen Stansberry makes the stop. Coming up later on ESPN2, the semifinals of the Rainbow Classic tonight at 10 p.m. Eastern Time. Game one, it is UMass taking on Southern California. And then at, following that one, game two, 12.30 a.m. Syracuse and Rhode Island. That's the finals of the Rainbow Classic out in Hawaii. Mohammed on the reception. Great move, leaps over the defender, and that move will give him enough for the first down. Talk about Masoud Muhammad. We mentioned before he was recipient of the President's Award for Perseverance. Overcame so much in his five years at Michigan State. He had a major knee operation as a true freshman. He was injured on the practice field. Got involved with the law. Had some problems there. And the coaching staff, Muhammad said, I can't say enough about George Perlis and the staff that was there for so many years. How they stood behind me and how they helped me develop into a total person. Looks upfield, and he will scamper out of bounds at the 35-yard line. Let's check in in Tempe, Arizona with Mike Tirico. Michael? Tony Banks. The Jerry, thanks. As this game winds up in Shreveport, a reminder that coming up, just after the end of this game, top of the hour, Greg Myers, the All-American DB for Colorado State, leads the Rams, their second Holiday Bowl appearance against K-State tonight. That's coming up right after our Independence Bowl game, so don't go away as we go back to Shreveport and Jerry. Thank you, Michael Myers. Boy, what a talent he is. Fourth in the nation in punt returns, averaging almost 16 yards to return. And on, for Kansas State, Chris Canney, second in the nation with eight interceptions on the year. That should be something to watch coming up from San Diego. Oh, he can't quite hang on. Mark Renaud had plenty of running room, had about two or three offensive linemen in front of him. Looks like he may have turned to run before he tucked the ball away. That's exactly what happened to him. He took his eyes off the ball, and you can't catch it if you don't see it all the way in. A good call. They had the screen against the LSU blitz. Exactly the matchup you want. Renaud just took his eyes off the ball a little bit soon, causing the drop. Third down and 12. Third and 12 for Michigan State. At the LSU 36-yard line. Once again, shotgun by Tony Banks. Three wide receivers. And looking to the outside for Eric Mason once again. And the completion will down to the 22-yard line. Outstanding effort by Mason. We see Banks really gun this thing out there. Tremendous job of going down and we'll let you make the call. It looked like it might have skipped in. I tell you what, uh, you haven't you didn't hear a lot about Derek Mason maybe this year. An incredible talent as a wide receiver. You heard more about his kick and punt returning prowess, but when you've got a conference that has a Monty Tumor, Mercury Hayes, Bobby Ingram, and Terry Glenn, it's hard to hear much about Derek Mason as a wide receiver. Banks scrambles to his right, heaves it toward the end zone, and it'll be a jump ball. And Clarence Linton will pick it off for LSU at the one-yard line. Jerry, we saw earlier in the third quarter where Lenton came over and made that same kind of play. He was denied the interception because it was knocked out of his hands. He does an outstanding job from the free safety position when the quarterback scrambles of staying with the quarterback and breaking on the ball when it's in the air. Watch Lenton back in the middle of the field, continue to break over. He does a nice job of going up, catching the ball at its highest point, came down with both feet in bounds before he went out of bounds. I know Tony Banks has a lot of respect for his receiver, Derek Mason, but he had no shot at that one. 
second interception of the night, and LSU will take over deep in their own territory. Clock winding down here. We're inside of seven minutes, and that's the story there for Michigan State. Hard to win it when you turn the ball over six times. It's almost impossible to win a football game, Jerry, when you have that kind of differential in, in turnovers. There's a look at Derek Mason. What a talented young man. And the good thing about Mason for the Spartan fans, he's a junior. He'll be back next year. As this program continues to build, you know, both these coaches talked about the fact that they were happy to be in this bowl game, but this was just the beginning. The future was yet to come. That's exactly right, Jerry. They both have an opportunity to go to the top of their conference and possibly win a national championship. Relax. Kick back. Rest easy. Not the first thoughts that come to mind when investing on your own. Working with a Dean Witter broker, you'll feel differently. Every client's ambition should be our ambition. Their dreams. Our dreams. Because after all, it's reassuring to know someone is there looking out for your interests. Dean Witter. We measure success one investor at a time. My, what big ears you have. All the better to hear you with, my dear. And what big eyes you have. The better to see you with, my dear. Real red, real smooth, red wolf. My, what big teeth you have. What are they for? Oh, my. Follow your instincts. Lots of deadlines, lots of money, lots of screaming. It starts to burn a hole in your gut. Antacids are more prevalent in the brokerage industry than coffee is in Colombia. I take Tagamet HB. Tagamet HB works. You don't have to chew it. You don't have to drink it. You could take it and go on with the rest of your life. This is a gold card. It can't grant you inner peace. I don't know. No card on the planet's more accepted, so you could go someplace peaceful. And with a credit line of at least $5,000, you'll have the freedom to relax. And freedom like that might be the path of true wisdom. So I guess Gold MasterCard can help you to see the light. Just remember to wear sunscreen. Gold MasterCard, it's more than a gold card. It's smart money. Look for your Gold MasterCard application and apply today. Back in Shreveport, Louisiana for the second of what is an ESPN Bowl triple header tonight. Heritage Bowl earlier today, won by Southern in the Georgia Dome. This one a little over six minutes away from conclusion. Coming up next, the Holiday Bowl from San Diego. Here is Tyler back to pass, and Robert Toomer unable to hold on. And once again, we're going to get a penalty flag. Pass intended for number 36, Robert Toomer. Incomplete, there is a flag on the play. Flag being thrown by the side judge. It was scheduled to be fourth down at nine. No fly. And they're going to wave it off. Terry Curlington and the Big Eight officiating crew deciding that there was indeed no penalty. So LSU will punt it away. And there's Nick Saban saying we got six minutes and seven seconds to try to get back in this one or make it respectable. What a first half Michigan State had. They said they had to pass the ball effectively to set up the run. They did it in the first half. They did not do it here in the second half, or at least thus far. Chad Kessler, leading punter in the SEC, launched the 64-yarder against Auburn early, and he will not kick the ball. He will just stand there, and if someone doesn't get to him, the clock's going to run out. And finally, they run him out of bounds. They will take the safety, and then they will be able to kick the ball away from their own 20-yard line. So, for the safety. So coach, 
that's an unusual situation an unusual decision at this point in the game there was no evidence in any of the earlier punting situations that Michigan State was getting close to your punter. So that was a, a surprising decision on the part of Jerry DiNardo. Let's check in out in Tempe with Mike Tirico. Michael? Well, Jerry, we're now over 70 points in that game. We don't as expect as many points coming up in our next game because of people like Tim Colston, the consensus All-America defensive tackle for number 10 Kansas State, getting set to take on Colorado State. Kickoff's coming up. We'll get you there as soon as we are done in Shreveport. Right now, let's go back to the Independence Bowl and Jerry. 71 points have been scored here. The record at this bowl game is 74 points. Wake Forest and Oregon back in 1992, so we're just three points away from tying the Independence Bowl record. And once again, uh, you would think that had there been some challenge on the punter, you would uh, you would have thought about it, but they haven't really had uh, any close calls at all. That situation of taking the safety, you do in two situations. One, when you're really struggling with protection. The Eric other Mason is very late in the football ball. game when there's just a matter of seconds to go where you don't want to block punt, recovering your end zone for what could be the winning score. Wade Ritchie just boomed one down inside the five-yard line, and Derek Mason will pick it up. Remember, he's already had a 100-yarder tonight, and he will reverse the field back to the 10-yard line, now back up to the 11, and boy, what a talent. Still on his feet. Mason scrapping and digging for every yard he can get, and we have some more Derek shoving down there, and once again, a penalty play. play. We'll go back and look at the intentional safety again. What LSU is obviously doing is trying to take a few seconds off of the clock. You instruct your punter in this situation, do not take a hit. Don't get tackled where you risk a fumble. Back the ball out the back of the end zone, giving the, the safety to, to Michigan State and then the free kick from the 20-yard line. The, the question is why do it when you have the lead that you had? On the kicking team, first down. Normally that's a, a situation, as I mentioned earlier, that you do at the end of a football game when you don't want to risk a block punt recovery in the end zone for a touchdown that could be. And Jerry DiNardo having a conversation with one of his young men there on the sidelines after the personal foul call, which has given Michigan State a little better field position than what they would have had inside their own 20. Here is Banks rolling to his right as the receiver, Muhammad. And they're trying to keep Muhammad in bounds, keep the clock running, and they managed to do so. He was struggling to get out of bounds, and Talvey Crawford would have none of that. Crawford showing his strength over there to be able to take Muhammad, who's a 210-pound receiver, but Crawford himself at 5'11", 216 pounds, showed the upper body strength to pull Muhammad back onto the field, keep the clock running. Down to five minutes, or right at the five-minute mark here in this football game. A 19-point deficit by Michigan State. And once again, Banks will scramble and toss it upfield to Napoleon Outlaw, and he'll make the reception over midfield, down about the 46-yard line. Both of these football teams have bright futures ahead of them, as we mentioned earlier. LSU played 66 players regularly, Jerry, during the season. 18 of those 66 were freshmen. What a great start that'll be as they go back into spring practice to prepare for the 96 season. No doubt about that. A youth movement at Baton Rouge. It all picked off, and that one will be picked off by Torrey James. He is one of the seniors back there, and we're getting yellow flag fever now. It's as we'll take a look once again at Torrey James' pick here. Tony Banks simply went to the out route one time too often. He looked at it all the way, giving Torrey James an opportunity to break on the ball, come in front of the receiver. And we see Derek Mason wrestling to the ground after the interception. Dead ball. Unsportsmanlike. On Michigan. Dead ball. Unsportsmanlike. On LSU. First down, LSU. 
five penalties on both sides. Coming up next, San Diego, California, the site, Jack Murphy Stadium, Colorado State, Kansas State. That should be a good one. Brad Nesper, Gary Danielson, Adrian Carson standing by. And they're working on a young man who has been a major part of the success story of Michigan State this year, Derek Mason. Training staff there looking at that young man. And to give the Falk has an opening up over midfield. And he will gain about 12 yards on the carry. Great block up front by Tom Turner, the senior from Bastrop, Louisiana. Kevin Falk is something very special. They take and run the wide zone dive play. Get the ball deep in the backfield and look at his explosion up into the open crease in the Michigan State defense. The whole design of that play is to get the defense spread, create a soft spot, and then have a back like Falk that can just go and attack it. Less than four and a half minutes remaining here. And once again, Falk has the carry. He tries to stay in bounds and will be able to do so just inside the 45-yard line. 22 carries, over 225 yards, and two touchdowns for a young man, Kevin Falk. And remember Marshall Falk when he was a true freshman at San Diego State? He really burst on the national scene with a game where he gained 254 yards rushing as a true freshman. Now, this young man didn't have that kind of game this year until tonight. And what's so important is that he shows up big in the biggest game of the season. This is his first bowl game. This is LSU's first game. There's not an LSU player that's ever played the bowl game. And to have your freshman come up with that kind of performance, Jerry, that could be the best performance by a freshman running back during this entire bowl season. No doubt about it. And what a future that holds for uh, LSU. Look at their offense. They only have two seniors on the whole offense. Shedrick Wilson, the wide receiver, is a senior, and Mark King, the left guard. Otherwise, they're all underclassmen. In fact, they start two freshmen on the offensive line. Fanica and McClure, both their tailbacks are freshmen. Their quarterback is a true freshman. Well, if you're Jerry DiNardo, you just, uh, you're going to wear out your face smiling. But you can't wait for two things. You want to get on the road and recruit, take advantage of this bowl game and this impressive, what appears to be an LSU victory, and then you can't wait to get into spring practice. to Robert Toomer, and he is forced out of bounds just inside the 35, down about the 32-yard line to Demetrius Underwood. And on the other side of the field, Coach Michigan State, this is just the beginning for what Nick Saban hopes to be able to do up there for the Spartans. Their future is extremely bright. Exactly right. Both of these coaches took advantage of the extra practice ball preparation that worked a lot of their young players as they prepared for this game. Less than two and a half minutes remaining here in this one. It was a sellout crowd the first time in the 20-year history of the Poland Wiener Independence Bowl. They sold it out, and what a show they put on tonight. And that young man was a major part of it, Kevin Falk. He now goes over 230 yards rushing. LSU up by 19, 45, 26 as we approach the two-minute mark. Get yet another flag on the field. And let's check in out in Tempe, Arizona with Mike Tirico. Okay, Jerry, considering that the margin here is 19 points, the game's essentially decided. If anything happens, we'll keep you updated, but we don't want you to miss any of the game. The Plymouth Holiday Bowl, Kansas State, Colorado State, to